Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino back here with another round of the Survivor Podcast that specializes in the arbitrary and the reductive because we are here to uh, rank once again Survivor's greatest musical moments here on Outwit, Outplay, Outlist. I am Rob Sesternino and I'm joined here by my uh, co-host for all of these adventures, uh, ranking all of Survivor's most trivial things. Here is the great Mike Bloom. Hello, Rob. If music be the food of love, Survivor players wouldn't be starving so much. So I'm happy to, to get a little harmonious and talk about some of Survivor's most musical moments across 40 seasons. Yes. Okay. We are ready to go. Uh, also, I breaking news of this hour. Uh, I'm just uh, going through... Uh, a slight earthquake also as uh we're going through the show so maybe oh is goodness. that a, oh. if that's a if that's a good omen or not uh hope the family is okay but if anything <laughs> uh develops uh we'll be sure we may have to stop down all right okay <laughs> with us here also to talk about the survivor music it was her idea to come here and talk about this here is jenny autumn jenny how are you i'm great i I hope you are great. I hope that the earth kick quake is not causing you. I, okay, well, I hope that that is the the worst thing that's going to happen during this podcast. Yeah, I'll, just um, text, I'm, I'll just text my wife and make sure. Yeah, let's okay. just make sure everyone's good. But mm. um, once upon a time, I, I did uh, a wand off uh, paying tribute to uh, Stephen Fishback's uh, comments about ranking being uh, arbitrary and reductive. And uh, so I feel like maybe something is coming full, full circle here to be able to be a part of uh ranking some of survivors musical moments so yes okay well, that this podcast is happening yes uh this is going to be a lot of fun here today we're going to go through survivor musical moments here uh today of course we uh, went through everything survivor heroes versus healers versus hustlers uh this past wednesday the 33rd ranked season according to the fans of uh, rob has a podcast so if you missed any of that myself jessica Lee, and Chappelle got together on wednesday night uh definitely check that one out and mike this is uh, a list podcast together, but we're going to be uh, back talking some uh, Brand Steel next week, too. Yes. Yeah, so this has been highly requested during the Super Bowl. Several commercials were being shown, led in part by Survivor host Jeff Probst, leading several characters from the CBS Viacom merger up Paramount Mountain. I believe it was called, and it's truly a crossover in the making that only rivals Avengers Infinity War. And so you and me are going to get together in honor of the launch of Paramount Plus, which will host all Survivor content as of March 4th. We're going to get together next week and see what happens when you throw Jeff Probst, Beavis and Butthead, Spock, and more onto a Survivor season. Mayhem will certainly ensue, and who knows, maybe we'll get a theme song out of it to go along with the musical theming. Okay. All right. Uh, very intriguing. Okay. So excited to talk about Survivor's Greatest Musical Moments here today. How did we define a musical moment on Survivor? Yeah. So a lot of caveats with this one. I define a musical moment for this sake as a Survivor contestant sings a song on the show. So this is not going to be out of Russ Landau's score. Uh, it really stands enough on its own. You could do an entirely different list from that. Uh, I included stuff from Ponderosa videos as well as the reunion since they are sort of Survivor and Survivor adjacent. However, I am not talking about Survivor songs that were songs that were from Survivor alumni outside of Survivor. So okay. apologies to Tidy Whitey's, Otis's discography, Bryce Isaiah's discography. Those will Alicia not be Rosa. talking about today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, neither, neither music that will be that is sung during RHAP exit interviews either. Those are not and candidates. Chase Rice, not to mention. Well, he might make an appearance, actually. Uh, oh, you recently okay. watched the Nicaragua okay. reunion, so you might remember that. <laughs> yes. So yeah, so we are talking <laughs> about <laughs> moments where <laughs> contestants sang either songs they made up or copyrighted songs or something in between on the show Survivor proper. Yes. Okay. Also, Mike, that are we going off of things that have remained in the CBS All Access library, soon to be Paramount Plus, uh, that a lot of uh, the copyrighted music that has been sung on Survivor has been redacted? Yeah, well, listen, we're going to be dirty little criminals today. Uh, we're we're going to be playing the music in toto. So mm -hmm. hopefully 
everything so everything is is peachy keen on the side of of copyright issues but yes a lot of these things if you go back and watch survivor now via those channels you will not find due to said copyright issues including uh several moments that might be involving the person that we're talking to on this podcast okay all right wow. are you talking Me? about jenny <laughs> yes if you remember jenny's song from from fiji in which she's saying kalis's milkshake is completely redacted from episode seven mm -hmm. of fiji yeah okay <laughs> kid on my socks is totally redacted now yeah exactly it, for, for many reasons it's on youtube it's on okay. youtube <laughs> all right so you can find it if you need to. <laughs> jenny are you excited for this i am excited for this i mean i i think that you know musical moments on survivor essentially uh gave birth uh you know by way of uh josh wiggler of course to mm -hmm. something wonderful that rhap has brought to everyone the wand off and that is something that is very near and dear to my heart so i i think that this is something that is worth talking about so true. there's there were a lot more moments than i even recalled yeah. uh when it, i was just trying to pull, pull things from my head um i'm a person yes. that will sing to myself <laughs> mm -hmm. not that it's any good and so i feel like there's like a lot of relatable people are bored on survivor they're singing they're singing when they're happy they're singing when they're sad so i feel i feel like there's some real good uh gems over the mm -hmm. 40 seasons yep here, can I share an embarrassing story uh, for me about my Please. time on Survivor? And, uh, and you mentioned some of my things that got redacted. Uh, you know, I was in a very like karaoke phase at the time that I went to go play Survivor. Oh, yeah. Survivor. Roger makes mention of it. Yes. And he <laughs> called me a pathetic loser, which is like, uh, you know, Classic. par for the course. Check my mentions. And yeah, so just another day on the Internet, Roger. Just another day. <laughs> just another day. He was an early adopter. And so I was uh, one day. I don't remember exactly why, but I think I sang the entire song of uh, Kelly Clarkson's A Moment Like This, a uh, popular song at the time uh, mm -hmm. coming off of the first uh, American Idol. And then I remember uh, Tyler, the Tyler, the PA uh, saying to me, Rob, enough stop singing i'm like why people sing all uh, people sing on survivor all the time he's like well they don't sing kelly clarkson was it because it was What's wrong with kelly clarkson? <laughs> was it because it was it was on like talking about the biggest show on a rival network is that it or is it a copyright no, it's just like no it's just like you're uh, you know also you're a kind of you're a loser you're oh, you i was know. gonna say is it was it more so that like if you sang the friends theme song would they get similarly mad it was it I that they would have thought that, that was opponent. cute and it's shorter i think uh as opposed to me just talking about talking about kelly clarkson but <laughs> um look i was excited i was excited for a moment like that and then uh it was there okay i mean some people do indeed like wait that. a lifetime for it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that's how i felt that's how i felt uh going on survivor all right that being said all right mike where do you want to start? Are we going chronological order? We're going to go chronological order. And you know what? Let's start at the very, 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 very beginning. Speaking of the sound of music, uh, we're going to go to the very first episode of Survivor Proper. We are going to, unfortunately, Sonia Christopher's one and only episode as the first first one out in Survivor history. Of course, that was back in the day of luxury items. Sonia Christopher, very quirky person, brought a ukulele to the island. And there is one memorable scene in the premiere of survivor borneo where sonia sits down with richard hatch the alpha and the omega of survivor borneo and she concocts a little song that she made up to richard called bye bye blues here's a, a the therapist version of bye bye blues if i can remember it i've bye bye blues thanks to pros bye bye Blues give me packs of milk, ring, birds sing. Sun is shining, no more whining. I live through. Da -da -da -da. Life is hell, but I'm swell. Bye bye, bye, blues. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, bye bye, blues is the exact opposite of 2020. No, uh, but I think it's time Hello. for Sonia to come back, uh, rewrite the, rewrite the song, and it's time to do uh, you know, uh, bye bye COVID. I've got Pfizer or Moderna, like uh, yeah, just do it all about uh, Johnson, coronavirus vaccine. Johnson. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. And I, yes. Should, I should also point out this is a real song, as Sonia She's points a, out. Yes, like Sonia's like, like a weird parody. out. Her, yes. yeah. She, she maybe she was the original like wand off artist. Like I didn't even yeah. realize. Yeah. Um mm. this is I love this. Uh I can just hear her like I can see her smiling like while she's singing. Like it just like it really does lift me up. I will say, uh, I've taken Paxil and I didn't really like it. So I don't know if I agree with all the mm. lyrics. But okay. should, should, did Sonia miss her calling? Should all prescription drug commercials from then on out have had Sonia's music in it? You know, where yes. like instead of instead of the the listless uh the the laundry list of side effects, it's well, no, 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 no. It. Mike, you have it backwards. <laughs> Sonia's song should end with then her uh may cause drowsiness. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't use if you are pregnant or breastfeeding. Uh, must <laughs> you turn to like a Gilbert like and Sullivan Richard, patter song? <laughs> Richard could have like chimed in underneath <laughs> underneath it while she's still singing. It's been yeah, yeah like a little duet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's great. I I love that. I don't know. At the time, were people humming it the next day? Probably not. But just as a, it's in the first episode. It's the first boot. It's her like really one moment in the episode. Yeah, I would say other this, than falling this is down. when people remember yeah. Sonia Christopher. I think this is the moment to the point where I believe when they do the the rites of passage when they go by the torches in Survivor Borneo. I believe it's Sonia playing the ukulele. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so. it's a personality moment too. Like well, for someone that only has one episode, like that, it's like a defining personality moment. So. Mm -hmm. definitely iconic for her for the season as a whole maybe not it, was it instantly but... iconic or did it become iconic or after time i think it took it took time to become <laughs> iconic yeah and i mean i ha i feel like it had a resurgence um maybe again i'm i'm looking at everything through the lens of rhap but like you know the first one Same. out uh <laughs> right um series where we got to revisit with sonia mm -hmm. Um, so I feel like bringing that back to, to the front of mind, um, in recent years kind of reminded everyone of, of this, uh, moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in the days when like luxury items were pretty cool. <laughs> yes. Well, I do feel like that just to go back to the REJP part of it, where that let, you know, it's, uh, HHH week. It's very mm -hmm. appropriate because HHH was where the wand off all got started. So it's, I think it's very appropriate that we're doing this uh, Survivor music related podcast here uh, as we look back at the 35th season of Survivor. Totally. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of synergy. And not yes. to mention also just the, the other piece of synergy here is that Josh did first one out and Sonia was a big part of the interviews that he did in first one out. And then at the end of that season, uh, we posted like the whole like uh, Josh's like hour long interview with Sonia about her experience. So, uh, yeah, Sonia yeah. is uh, li we linked her to HHH uh, -H -H also. Oh, yeah, exactly. Sonia uh, made her resurgence in 2017. Now she's back again in 2021. Yeah. OK. All right. So let's take a look at the board. All right. Uh, my, uh, the great Mike Bloom has uh, put together our list and I'm going to share my screen here so we can see where to put it. We will put it in one of four tiers that we always do here on Outwit, Outplay, Outlist. Uh, those four tiers are the top tier worth playing for. Second tier, my life is fine. Uh, third tier is called Ain't No Hershey Bar. And the bottom tier for the most ratchet of things on the list is called Forget You, Go Home, Goodbye. So I think, ironically, though Sonia does go home here, I think it's at least above that. I am debating if I want to put it in My Life is Fine, because this does feel iconic to me as we discuss whether that's latent or not, much like the side effects of, of Prozac. But I do feel like this is something associated with Sonia. It's the very first musical moment in the show, and so I think it's very unique in that perspective. I don't think it's anything top-tier, extraordinary, you know, absolutely quintessential, but I think it's very good. Jenny. Yeah, I, I I echo a lot of Mike's sentiments here that there the the things that make it iconic is that is like the the very first occurrence of someone singing a song on Survivor. It's an original song or you know at least partially original which I appreciate <laughs> because um I think that that's not always the case with these musical moments on Survivor. So I always appreciate like some original lyrics thrown in. Um and like, yeah, this is the OG. This is this is starting the wave of people singing on Survivor. So, um, I mean, I definitely don't think I'm. I feel prepared to put it above. My life is fine. Yeah. Um, 
So but, I think for now, until we see what the rest of uh, the spread is, I'm okay with my life is fine. It's my life is fine. It's probably going to be at the back of my life is fine. Yeah, I think so. But a good, shot play, already. A, good, yeah. a good place setter at the moment, like a nice capo in a ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Mike, what is uh, the song number two? Song number two is from season number two. I should also mention here before we get too far ahead, I want to profusely thank not only the patrons of Rob Has a Podcast, but also Shut Up Tim. Yes. Uh, for those that might remember, I believe we're going on nearly six years ago. You got together with Shut Up Tim and Ryan Elder <laughs> yes. to do a podcast yes. about some of these memorable moments. And Tim was gracious enough to lend some of these sounds to me. This was one that I honestly didn't remember until Tim brought it up because it's actually a secret scene or deleted scene from the clip show of Survivor, the Australian Outback. Mm -hmm. But Jerry Manthe came onto the show to show her star power. And here she's going to attempt a little bit of singing as well by trying some Fiona Apple, which I hear is quite difficult to do. So here is, uh, here's Jerry Manthe tuning up her vocal cords to the, uh, the Oga Chord tribe. I've been a bad, bad girl. I've been careless with the delicate man, and it's a sad, sad world when a girl will break a boy just because she can. Heaven help me fall the way I am. Save me from these evil deeds before I get them done. And I need to be redeemed to the one I sinned against. Cause he's all I ever knew of love. Fiona Apple's yeah. hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Tina. Uh, Tina. I, what I love about <laughs> Tina Weston is, again, she presents herself as the nice, genteel Tennessee mom when she can be so cold especially to someone like jerry mm. who she does not have the, the the best taste for and so that's just a perfect example of the tina west and passive aggression mm -hmm. uh i went so that clip actually goes on um and so she's like oh yeah fiona apple is like really hard to sing and then <laughs> jerry's like oh i think that like her and i are the same key it's like just so so awkward i love like the like slight passive aggressive like biting humor from tina it's it's a beautiful moment mm -hmm. um yeah. this is one of my favorite songs whoa oh, really yeah so so how do you feel did, did jerry big do a video. good cover of it sorry did jerry do a good cover of it in your opinion um, Are you saying no okay, dog? Well, here's the thing here's the thing i can't sing like I, let me just get in front of it i cannot sing um and so uh but i mean i don't think it was the worst but uh there were a couple shaky moments there was uh the timing little pitchy was a little, dog. Little pitchy yeah. dog yeah yeah mm -hmm. um and like there were like a couple weird pauses and she like kind of like cut. no claudia conway she like <laughs> yeah, right and she kind of cut and then just like skipped to another part i also felt like it went on way too long for oh like, yeah well there, well it gets to a certain point where i think she realized that she goes you know the rest i know mm -hmm. it's like are you gonna go through the whole song and like it's just the silence of everyone else is just so awkward paired with the i don't know if it was like edited in but like the sounds of the nature in the background yeah, <laughs> like, just, yeah. to, to emphasize that that there was nothing going on there no was right no track <laughs> no clapping when you sing you, know, you don't want to hear crickets also <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, Jerry does not get such a, a warm reception to both her singing and her persona in general in the Australian Outback. So maybe that should have been yeah. a sign for her. It was of, a cold room. Yeah, yeah, maybe on the surreal life, if she would have tried maybe. it, it would have gone over better. Not the right audience, I, I would say for that. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's I don't a know. Weird song to sing, like it to a group too. Like it's just mm. everything about it. Like the lyrics combined with like how she was viewed by people was like very interesting. Just a very interesting choice by Jerry. Should like I said, one of one of my favorite songs, but it's just like really that's what you're going for. If we're talking about missed you know, opportunities, missed should Jerry have come back last year with a viral video where she sings all of Fetch the Bolt Cutters, Fiona Apple's newest album? Sure. Let's limit yeah. it to like uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> the I, the iTunes version? Just yeah, 30 seconds. TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> yeah, TikTok okay. version. All Vine. right. 
<laughs> yeah, that's I'm gonna do TikToks to do a uh, like a lip sync to all of these songs after this gets done, Mike. <laughs> Can't wait. I love it. I love Send it. Me the file. Send, Send me the audio. Stuff that's coming up. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Let's place Jerry on the big board. I don't think we're gonna be uh, so rude as to say that this is ratchet. Forget you. Go home. Goodbye. Right. I, yeah. Definitely not. I, I don't. don't know, I don't. I don't know so. about that. Wow, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you think this oh, is Jerry. ratchet? I just. I know, it's like we have a we have a high bar to clear. Okay, listen. No offense against Jerry, but it's purposely awkward and cringy. I kind of hmm. like that about it, but um, like, uh, it, and plus, I have like I love the song, um, hmm. and I love that it wasn't perfect, um, and I just love like the the humor that came along with it. Uh, with it, you know, being so poorly received by everyone. So yeah, I I do to Jenny's point. I do feel the irony of the the reception to it may may bump it into ain't no Hershey bar. But I will say, maybe this is me planting my own seed. I will not be too surprised if by the end of this, all it slips back into the lowest tier. Hmm. I mean, fair enough. I feel like it should be at the back of half of ain't no Hershey bar. I don't think it's Ratchet. Is it just because it's Jerry that you want to include her in the Ain't No Hershey Bar tier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jerry's song, It Ain't No Hershey Bar, if you ask me. Uh, but but it's not like, oh my God, this is embarrassingly bad. Like, we, again, we said, little pitchy dog. Uh, Tina get, comes over the top with like a like good passive aggressive shade. But it's not like embarrassing for everybody involved. All right, I'm I'm fine putting it in ain't no Hershey bar right now. Yeah, I, I, I think have a I very low it, bar no. for forget you go home goodbye. Yeah, I kind of I think that it may end up there uh, depending on mm. feelings, but I don't feel ready to put it. Let's uh, see what else is on the list. Yeah. No, I will I will not jump the gun in this regard. All right, let, let's let's move on to the very next season. Actually, season three, we know how to talk with T Bird, but let's sing. As well, this is the reason why T Bird sings the intro and outro to the aforementioned mm -hmm. Talking with T Bird podcast. Here, I will say that Will from America sings the intro. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I thought for some reason that she also sang the the intro as well. But here is the onus of that: T Bird singing a little bit of Charles Strauss's Annie during the Merge Immunity Challenge in Survivor Africa. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow. Mm. Oh, she's singing? She's singing tomorrow. From Annie? Uh-huh. Tomorrow, tomorrow, mm -hmm. I love you. Tomorrow, oh. you're only a day away. Yes. yes. That's how you get applause, Jerry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This m makes me so happy. Queen. I, yes. So I'm I, I'm just smiling thinking about it. Um, and again, the the reception of it, everyone was like, how can you not love T-Bird? First of all. Yeah. She and, went for it. She went for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And this and this is all while holding up water. Like this, this is the prototype of Christian Hubicki filibustering for five hours, right? This is like I'm bored during an immunity yeah. challenge. I'm going to throw out a song. I also love that they throw in the cross talk of everyone being like, she's singing tomorrow from Annie. Yeah. They're just like in disbelief about it. It's, it's mm -hmm. a fantastic capper and very evocative of T-Bird. Yeah. So boy, this is great. I remember this so well. I remember when we T-Bird was in the running for second chances and she came back and I had been reunited with T-Bird after all these years that we hadn't spoken because we we used to like email a little bit after uh, that mm -hmm. she, uh, she came through Survivor and then I played in the Amazon. I had sent her a magic eight ball that she had asked me for uh, after Survivor the Amazon had ended. And then we, you know, sort of lost touch for all these years. And then when she was in the, the running for second chances, I said, T-Bird, like, this is your campaign song. This is the sun is going to come out tomorrow. Like, will you will you sing it for us? She sang it again on the podcast. Uh, second chances was not that time. But maybe talking with T-Bird was. Exactly. The this sun did come out. When, when one 
Survivor season door closes, a podcast window opens in this case. Mm -hmm. And the sun came streaming in through that window. And mm -hmm. I think we've gained so much more than we would have. And and this is not, like not meant as any offense to uh, T Bird if she had gotten on second chances. But I think that what we've managed to to get from talking with T Bird and just her involvement with the podcast since is like totally worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it was good for her. It was good for Jeremy because then he uh, probably wouldn't have won. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, right. that uh, good for, good for all involved. Maybe not t as much for T Bird. Uh, you know what? She avoided. Uh, she hasn't gotten to the hard knock life. I'll just say <laughs> she. Uh, I think she, I think she got to the podcast, and we said, "I think you're gonna like it here." And that and would be good. the song to sing on Survivor. You're like sort of like 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 uh, in like the Edge of Extinction. Victoria's like scrubbing the pan. Like it's a hard knock life for us. <laughs> Yeah, I think you know what? If you really want to gain friends on Survivor, go out there and sing musical numbers. Because really, that just has a fantastic batting average. Just try to. Ron theme Clark it. was almost there. Yeah, just try to theme it to a standard, and people will go gaga over it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would All fail right. miserably. <laughs> Let's take a look at the board. All right. Can't be Ratchet, no? no. I mean, this has got to be at least my life is fine and above Sonya as well. Okay. All right. So yeah. at least. My life is fine. Is it? I mean, is it worth playing for? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I could be swayed to put it in there. I could too. I feel like, I mean, at least for now, um, and I'm not trying to say, Rob, that you're going to have to change things 8 million times, but uh, I, I mean, I love it. It is iconic. And like the whole challenge, like, and I mean, I guess we're just talking about the musical part, but like it's tied to an iconic moment for her in general mm -hmm. in the game so yeah. i just feel like it's just so memorable mm -hmm. it's a good question rob if we don't put it in worth playing for will claris light our asses on fire on twitter <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it's as much of a clarence moment but it was, it was clarence uh, and cheaper that better were left be right? than sorry yeah <laughs> just tell him it was akiva's idea <laughs> Exactly. It was okay. Chad. Chad was the one who came yes. up with this yes. list. Yes. Exactly. Akiva, the, the, the heart medication. And Sonia, tell them the side effects. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's leave it worth playing for and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Let's, let's put this on easy street for the time being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Good job. All right. Mike, All right. What's next? Let's, we're moving on to the Marquesas. And look, when you think Survivor and you think hardcore rap, of course, you think Gabriel Cade, the guy that was raised in a commune, brought into Survivor Marquesas, said he really wasn't there for the game, got voted out in the fifth episode. But before he came out of the game, Gabriel Cade had some verses to spit. <laughs> so here is Gabe rapping about Survivor on Survivor Marquesas. Hey, 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 hey. Now chilling on my raft in the South Pacific Looking at my home is gonna see terrific Got a little tarot cooking on the stove Got a lot of love in my little shack home Living out here in Survivor 4 Never been south of the equator Dipping in the ocean Challenges! Immunity. We never know exactly who we gonna be, cause we're road to, and we can do. So let's have a rap. Let's have some little. <laughs> So I'm assuming, I don't know, maybe he said a bunch of curse words and they were just bleeping out that last portion because it just seems like it went into a high-pitched noise at the end. Yeah. Were those hyenas? <laughs> was this from the clip show? Was that, was that like a montage? I'm trying to remember if this was from the clip show or one of those early episodes of like, Road 2's got nothing to do because they're not going to tribal council. Mm -hmm. No, it's in the it's in the episode. It, mm. it, this is actually in the episode. In this boot episode, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, I... his, his game certainly went south of the equator, that's for sure. <laughs> There's no, like, he, he's really trying to be Lil Wayne here at, with the intentional mispronunciation of words to, to make it rhyme. And it's, it does not, it does not fly. I love it. Oh, I love it so he much. He's saved by Sean beatboxing. Like, that mm. is like the best part of the whole situation. If it weren't for Sean beatboxing, the, uh, 
we would have the the crickets and the birds from Jerry. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you didn't think he'd be like mashing a rock up and down to make a beat happen? <laughs> yeah. That is big where that, you know, you have want to have some sort of a backing track here on this Survivor music. Because if it's just a cappella, then the nature really does a drown. Maybe make sure you buy the ocean also. I do. I think, though, my favorite part is the transition into, I don't know if it's a later part of the rap or just another rap he starts entirely where it just completely changes tempo. But it's more of like... I don't know, a free word association exercise that it is a rap. He's just throwing out like survivor <laughs> society immunity challenge. Mm-hmm. Challenges. Immunity. <laughs> we are row two. These are words. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's take a look at the board. Gabriel Cade. All right. And of course, he's, uh, you know, branding the most thug thing possible, a teddy bear while he's rapping as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Mike. Does it make it out of the threshold for forget you, go home, goodbye? I see it's tough because while I would want to say no, I do think the cringy and perp- and bad aspect of it like kind of lifts it a bit. This isn't forgettable. That's for sure. And mm-hmm. so I, I, can't, I don't know how much I can damn Jerry with one, like, you know, not damn Jerry with one hand, but then shoot down Gabe with the other hand, considering that both are cringe- cringy attempts at making yeah. music out on the island. Yes. Jenny, what do you I, think? Yeah, I I agree with what Mike is saying that, that because if if I was elevating Jerry's performance because I actually enjoyed some of the cringe factor, it would be absolutely criminal, no no, no pun intended on that one, um, to let him. Oh, there goes my duck. Um, go below Jerry on on this uh, tier. So I. Th- I mean, it feels like it belongs down there in a way, but I, I could, uh, I could argue for for lifting it up to. Yeah, him. there I goes Jenny's look- duck. She's out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Immunity. Immunity. <Clash>. Row two. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Microphones. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put Gabriel right behind Jerry for now and see where the chips fall. Yeah, I I agree. I think that uh, I do think Gabe's rapping skills pale in comparison to what we're going to see throughout the rest of this time here. But I think he is a, a good marker of maybe something you can easily step over if you want to make the list here on out, out what I'll play out list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK. Uh, TKMG says he's no Peter Gabriel. He's well, no yeah, Peter no, Harkey either. There's no Wawa <laughs> pedal out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no vocoders. <laughs> Yes. Okay. All right. What is next, Mike? Well, Jenny mentioned Sean Rector, who was one to certainly open his mouth up and sing around. Hopefully, Tyler the PA did not go into Sean Rector as much as he, as he did with you, because Sean always I don't had his song. On that season. Yeah. yeah. Whether it was him rapping a bit about being on the horses on the way to the village with with Pascal, but the one that I picked uh, was very cathartic. We're going back to the musicals here because after John Carroll was stunningly voted out of Survivor the Marquesas. The next day, Sean, V, and Kathy are celebrating under the Survivor Marquesas waterfall landmark, and they decide to evoke a little bit of the whiz. Oh, God, it's so good. Oh, it's a new day. It feels like the whiz. Can't you feel a brand new day? 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 And the Monamu tribe was called yellow, so I think the yellow brick road metaphor totally scans as well. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So. Interesting. Uh, this is a nice moment in the season. Uh, mm-hmm. It comes on the heels of like the big move that happened in Survivor Marquesas. I have long said that Sean Rector, one of the most talented people to ever play in Survivor. He can sing. He can tell jokes, do impressions, and uh, just uh, was uh, give great confessionals. And he's uh, showing off just how talented he is here. Yeah. Uh, yes, he's got a set of pipes on him. Mm-hmm. And his energy and the like it's just such a pure moment. Like you can feel how happy he is. Can't you like, feel it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, 
Yeah, in the in the waterfall, you know, V and and KVO are chiming in. It's uh, it, it is a really nice moment. I will say it's not. Um, and I will preface this with that I'm not a big rewatcher of seasons unless it's for a purpose. So it's not something that I like would have drew from my memory. Um, especially like it's not, and it's not the one go to memory for Sean Rector, for example, that I would personally pull. But I it makes me happy and it is, I feel like it's a, a nice character moment for him because it's like a victorious moment. Um, and he's just so rootable. And I, and I love that the, uh, it actually all works out that Sean and V were singing a song from the Wiz, and the guy who just got voted out had Kathy P on his hand when he got stung by a seer. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> This Mike Bloom oh full bloom moment is sponsored by our friends over at Geico. Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it could be hard work, but you know what's easy? Bundling your policies with Geico. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. And it's a good thing too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to Geico.com, get a quote, see how much you could save. It's Geico easy. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. <laughs> You're welcome, Rob. <laughs> Should we look at the chart? Let's go to the chart. Let's look at the chart. It's going to go easy. It's going to go easy. Is that a new tier? Sure. Okay. Here we go. Sean Rector. Uh I think we have to put him above the bad songs, right? Definitely above the bad <laughs> yeah. songs. Yeah. He's above the bad songs. Uh, where do we go? Is he? Uh, does he make it up to My Life is Fine? That's a great question. Because like Jenny said, I don't think this is like as iconic as something like Sonya's song. Uh, what I do think it has going for it is the catharsis behind it. And like Jenny said, like the the joyousness behind it. And I think it comes from you know, a, a very uh, punctual and important moment of the game. It's actually like very representative, much like you would have a, a song as, a, as a, a backing track for a moment to evoke a certain emotion. Sean sort of has that there. So I, I think it's definitely below Sonya. My question is, is it in my life is fine or is it at the top of Ain't No Hershey Bar? Okay, Jenny, how do you feel that should Sean pass Sonya? I I agree that I don't, I don't think it passes Sonya. Um, and I'm kind of... Stuck on the same consideration that Mike mentions here about whether it's mm -hmm. it's top of Hershey bar, bottom of fine. Um, yeah, again, I just I it's I like it upon second listen, but it's not something that comes to my mind when I think about the season as much. I mean, neither did the Gabriel Kate rap until I revisited it, but uh, uh I think it's fine right there for now, right? I don't mm -hmm. know. What do you feel, Rob? Um, you know, I feel like that the moment is memorable. I feel like that, uh, the song is, did not stick with me. Like if you said mm -hmm. like, uh, right. I, you know, I, I remember the lyric brand new day, but I, I, I did not remember the rest of the song. Yeah. So, you remember them to like, be, to be fair, there's not much more of the song than what they mm -hmm. sing. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, actually, no, I, I think that I, I, I'm being persuaded down to the top of Hershey bar. All right, let's put it. Let's put it down there. Let's put it in front of Jerry. Okay. All yeah, right. No, I'm good with that. Mike, what's next? Well, this is going to be familiar to people. We covered this in Survivor's greatest voting confessionals, but since this is also technically a musical moment, we're going to include it here. I'll just say that. Okay, here okay. comes tonight's long distance dedication. It goes out to Rob from New York. He writes. Dear Casey, there's a mean old man in my life that's about to leave. Could you please play something appropriate for me? Well, Rob, here's your request. Na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. There we go. Na, 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 kiss him goodbye, I think is the, is the name of the song, technically <laughs> speaking. Beats me, I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, worth playing for top of the list oh uh, of course and number one yeah. with a bullet yeah um yep. yeah I, 
I really like wish I could tell you more about like the origins of like why I why I did that, why I thought to do that. I don't I don't really like remember like thinking like sitting on it like, oh, if I ever get on Survivor, I'm gonna do this. Uh I just didn't know what to do to say to to vote out Roger. And mm -hmm. so I, I thought that that would be funny. And I felt like uh like I feel like in the confessional booth, take some chances. Like if it stinks. They won't use it, right? And so I went in there and I did my thing and I came out and Jeff was so mad. He's so mad. <laughs> like, if you think that that's ever, ever going to get on the show, or he said, there's no chance that, that will ever get on the show. I'm like, sorry, geez. Sorry, I didn't know. Yeah. Well, I Were mean, you in there much longer than anyone else? That's like what, something that I was curious. I think about. the issue was I was too loud. Yeah, I was too uh, loud. And, and the you're Amazon. You're so quiet though. Like yeah. you're so yeah, but but you but you see you can see that back in those days the the stumps were in like very much the vicinity of right. tribal council. They did not the they did not try to segregate it as much as they have in yeah. in modern times. So I think you could very easily overhear it, especially if, if you're singing. I think it's tough to keep it sotto voce. The people on Survivor Net, yeah, they, it feels like they walk like uh, twenty feet away. Like I kind of feel like that on the Amazon. You're just sort of like we just like walked like maybe we're like ten feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Jeff was not thrilled. Uh, I was as surprised as anybody when that was in the episode. Yeah, well, I think the reason why maybe Jeff was so belligerent at the time is because this is the first and maybe one of the only times that that someone sings in a voting confessional. The only other time that I can't remember that won't be in this countdown is, uh, I believe, Betsy sings uh, Bad Boys, the cops theme song, when she's trying to vote Ben out in Survivor Samoa. That's the only other time I can really think of somebody singing a song in the voting confessional. <laughs> Wow. Okay, is that going to be on the list? Nope, that is not on the list. Oh, okay. I didn't mind. Yeah, I would. I would, uh, I would not want to put the cart before the horse in that regard. Okay. I mean, I this will... is I, this is iconic. Like, we're not like we're not going to beat around the bush. I mean, it's maybe you know so much more than just like a simple musical moment because like the, you know there's the whole lead up with the Casey thing. But again, I'm probably just going to keep pulling back to the wand off. The reason that you did this <laughs> comes back again in the existence of Casey Kasem in the wand off. And mm -hmm. it, the, yeah, like, like Mike is saying, the first time someone sings anything mm -hmm. in a voting confessional. And if Jeff had it his way the last time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think this is a big moment. It also comes at the conclusion of, you know, this big Roger boot episode, right? Where everyone's just dunking on him the entire time. Rob, you truly had the last dunk that shattered the backboard <laughs> with being able to literally sing his goodbye song essentially to him. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I think this is a very pertinent moment in, in the episode as well. Yeah. All right. So I will abstain from uh, recuse uh, yourself. Yeah, I will recuse myself uh, from this. Uh, so uh, have at it, and you, you know, cannot insult me if you put it in. Forget you, go home, goodbye. Well, I do not think it's going there. I mean, Jenny, I, I think it's got to be in worth playing for because I think this yeah. is one of the big musical moments. And look. Yes, and we may be a bit influenced, but screw it. This is our list. My question yeah. is, better or worse than T-Bird? Um, I mean, I it's hard to say because like T-Bird does like a full-on performance where we're we're getting a na 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 hey 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 goodbye um mm -hmm. from Rob. So like he, there's more to to work with in terms of a song and a performance musically from T-Bird. Whereas like what also lends to um, Rob's moment being so iconic is the like the Casey Kasem lead up mm. um, to it. So uh, don't make me decide. I don't know. No, I no, think, no, no. I think, I think, I think you, I think you bring up, I think you bring up a great point in that, you know, we included Rob's confessionals in the list of greatest survivor voting confessionals, not only just because of the song, but because of the entire Casey Kasem long distance dedication. <laughs> the song is not the entire thing, whereas T-Bird's performance is just that. And I think the fact that if we're talking about survivor songs, the fact that her entire performance is all encompassed into one, I think that personally beats out uh, you know, Rob's na 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 hey hey. They're both great. This is splitting hairs, but I do think that because we remember more so T Bird's entire singing rather than Rob's song plus something else, I'm gonna give it to T Bird over Rob. I agree. 
Yeah, I think I think I feel it. Good this should be that. the new artwork for uh, talking with T Bird, though. Yeah, I like it a lot. Actually, it's a very high quality photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just me and T Bird worth playing for. There yeah, you go. So congratulations, Rob. In a, in a musical <laughs> list, you end up being in the top tier. Take there that to go. the bank. Okay. All right. Let's go to our next contestant. What do you got, Mike? Well, Rob, we're actually going to stay with you, but we're going to your other season. Mm -hmm. So What during, other season? Exactly. It's during Survivor, <laughs> Survivor All-Stars. Uh, a lot of heavy rain coming down in Panama as the All-Stars are, are trying to, to make a living. And so Shapira always wants to make a living. To trying to make a living, trying to make a dollar. Is that what we call it now? I suppose so. But, you know, Shapira is always one to, to come up with some sort of way to entertain themselves, whether it's a fake tribal council, etc. And so when the rain finally poured down and you guys are scrounging to get water from what's coming down from the skies, uh, we decide to pull out some some CCR, I believe it is. So this is the Shapira yeah. tribe, including our very own Rob Cicerino, singing, Have You Ever Seen the Rain? <laughs> Nobody knows the word, but it's all good today, and I know we gotta drink some water. I wanna go. Have you ever seen the rain? Up and down, on the dome. So this really is like a tribe wand off, right? Because it seemed like yes. you guys coming up. But true to that effort, there's 15 different sets of lyrics going on simultaneously. Right. Here's the thing on singing on Survivor. Uh, nobody has the songbook. Uh, the <laughs> lyrics nobody has are the lead free sheet. form. Yeah, yeah. So you got to, when you go on Survivor, you got to commit a lot of songs to memory. I love that this like feels like uh you know late night karaoke where everyone has maybe been overserved by that mm -hmm. point. It's yeah. like some people know the lyrics but not quite and you know yelling over each other and like cheersing in the middle of a song like if I didn't know that they that you're actually, you know, starving on an island and just very excited about rain like I it very much sounds like uh, you know, late night karaoke to me and, and yes. no one knows the lyrics. <laughs> also, I believe Randy Bailey on a podcast appearance said that this is his all time least favorite survivor moment. Oh, uh, wow. He said he hates Does he this hate more... CCR? <laughs> yes, he hates this more than any other moment in the history of the show. I think well, he just you doesn't like CCR and like... then Boston Rob. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. It's a bad combination. He just doesn't he doesn't like Bad Moons Rising. He's a villain. And so I think he's uh, he doesn't like anything bad. So, Rob, what do you, is there like an origin story behind this? Was it just that the, the rain was pouring down and someone just started singing it and everyone joined in? Yeah, I think we we're just trying to, like, get the morale up around the camp. I mean, it had been raining for a while. We uh, also I think that this is probably like day four. We did not have a flint. It was too wet. Mm -hmm. We could not get a fire started. So like we were like literally like uh like uh I, I want to say dying of thirst, but I don't want to be too dramatic. But like we had not had water in uh many days, and we were on like a like a, a tropical island. So we were just trying to like uh stay a little bit like not so like down in the dumps. Mm -hmm. I, I think my favorite lyric, though, has to be coming down on Big Tom or on me, as he says, mm -hmm. he's like flapping his wings in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he went full third person. Yeah, I just love that like people aren't sure whether you're singing the original or are you parody songing like the the you know the competing voices through it, different interpretations of what you're doing. I feel like it really speaks to yeah to maybe the yeah. dynamic there, of what's going there on. Are, there are good intentions. I think like <laughs> like the Shapira tribe, it's a great microcosm, right? We're like it's a fun loving tribe, but there are so many dissonant voices with different opinions that it's just yeah. a bunch of disharmony. Yeah, exactly. I think that maybe there might have also been like a medley of different songs with oh. rain in the title. Uh, we were trying to come up with them. And then I think that might have been just like the one that stuck. Mm -hmm. I love CCR. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Or C H A P R A. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. True. Let's rank where, where does the Shapara tribe uh, land on this list? Okay. It's a good question. Yeah, because I, I don't know. It's definitely not ratchet. Yeah. But I would I'd say, say 
of the ones we've had so far, it's probably the one of the more forgettable ones. Yeah, I'd say it's it's a cute moment. It's not hot. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, well, I mean, it might have even been cold because of the rain. So it's like <laughs> very cold. It's definitely yeah. not a hot moment. OK, uh, is it ratchet? I see. That's the question. Like it because it's not memorable. Does that make it ratchet to you, in your opinion? I know that sometimes when we do these, you like to say, well, I don't remember it. And so yeah. that might make it ratchet. It might make it ratchet, but I think it might make it at the back of Ain't No Hershey Bar. So even so behind Gabriel Cade rapping. Yeah, like I think that maybe there's a version of this list where we come away where maybe we drop uh, Jerry and Gabriel to the bottom and that's the and that's the ratchet. But for now, I think it's better to be memorable and bad than to be fine and unmemorable. Yeah, that makes sense. But and I don't like, think that how bad ratchet. it how bad it is is like. Like, also it's also incredible. bad, but it's not it, that everybody's in on it. So it's not like embarrassingly yes. bad. Right. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do that the, gr the group mentality also helps as well. Right. That this is not just one person awkwardly singing. Have you ever seen the rain as rain's falling down on big Tom? Like everyone's joining in an mm -hmm. exaltation as it's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's leave it. Let's leave it there. And, and we have the right to adjust it at the back of ain't no Hershey bar. All right, let's move it. Let's move away from all stars. Let's dry ourselves out Look, from please. the rain. Yeah. Let's dry ourselves by the fire, actually, because in Survivor Vanuatu, which much like the beginning of this podcast also featured an earthquake, uh, Scout Cloud Lee was a rather interesting figure. And one time, I believe it's after Rory gets voted out, either Rory or Chad gets voted out. Safe to say Sarge is not very happy the next morning. Scout either doesn't see his mood or doesn't care because she's just going to launch into her own little song to start the day off with Sarge just giving her the worst death glares I've ever seen on Survivor. I'm picking on the ball of memories still held in my mind. La, 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 la. You lit one tiny candle in the dark. And it's driving me crazy. Bottom line, it's awkward right now. It's awkward talking to any of them. I think it's a reward challenge today. Yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> I could just do it. If the entire rest of Vanuatu was the Sergeant Scout show, I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Is an interesting so, song. It's it's, so it's my, not even a song. It's more so just like her vocalizing. Yeah, yeah she's like kind of just talking in like a sing song voice. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it's very haunting, actually. Haunting, good word. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, spooky. Spooky. Yeah, scout. there is like, <laughs> there's definitely like a haunting vibe to it. Where I don't know the yeah the the vibe is very spooky. Um, my only like uh knock on this one is just that i think that it's so it's such a um like visual comedy moment mm -hmm. and so yeah. i mean obviously we're listening to the audio of of these clips and you know in some in some cases it does invoke a, a physical or not a physical but a visual mem memory um mm. and i feel like it's hard it's like you have to see Sarge's face and like he it zooms in on just like this deadpan like misery <laughs> and I just mm -hmm. feel like without actually being able to see it it loses some of the impact that's a good point that I think there's a visual component that makes this scene very funny and really elevates this scene that maybe when you try to separate the audio out and so from a musical perspective it doesn't necessarily work as much as like the comedy of it overall which in needs to include the visual as well this is the first one that i think really requires the visual to, to make it a top tier okay to make it a top tier okay well no to, to make it i think uh 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 you know a qualifiable clip i should say at least comparable okay. to some of our top tier stuff all right yeah let's take a look at the list so my question is going to be, is this Ratchet? Oh, what do you think, Jenny? Uh, it's a great moment. I just don't like, again, I can't even remember any of the lyrics of what she said. Again, it's, it was almost more like a, like a, 
a sing songy spoken mm-hmm. word poetry yeah. type Something thing about, like, more picking than a up, song. picking up the gardens Unity and the bottles. Challenges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe she should have sang background for Gabriel's rapping. Yeah, that's what that was missing, right? <laughs> We're out here on Survivor. South of the Equator. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's just like, it, again, I, I feel like it just doesn't, it doesn't bring me back without actually seeing the clip. And I, I think that it can be easy to forget how funny it is without seeing Sarge's face. I don't know. I agree. I think this very much qualifies with the first two words of the bottom tier. We forget you, Scout, Mm -hmm. singing. And so I think we can forget you, go home, goodbye. Yeah. And the music is a little ratchet. (laughs) I mean, they tried it back, and I think like there's some strings that come in a little bit that make it sound like it's a weird haunted According to Sarge. I'm just saying, according to Sarge, this was ratchet. (laughs) <laughs> That's true. Sarge is the in-house critic. And he, mm-hmm. he, unlike Tina, is not doing like the, wow, random musings and whistling is hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you came up with those lyrics all, all by your, yourself. That's so wow, impressive. I did not think that. I thought that was written mm-hmm. by Bob Dylan himself. <laughs> okay. So I'm good with it here. I mean, yeah. do you, is there a case to make it higher? I think it's fine at the moment. Because I think that you know, we talked about how in, in the Ain't No Hershey Bar tier, there are some that uh, lack in certain areas, but make up for it in other areas. Uh, whereas I think that at the bottom tier, Scout, unfortunately, is, is sort of in double jeopardy in that it's forgetful and it's sort of a nothing burger as well. Hmm. Okay. All right. Mike, what is next? We're through the first nine seasons of Survivor. Through the four first nine seasons. And of course, we know that nothing really memorable musically happens in the 10th. So we're just going to move on. Okay, I will stop right there. I'm so sorry. Of course, we got to talk about Wanda Shirk. We have to talk about Wanda Shirk, the reason for the season, and then some. This is the lady behind the wand off. She is um, memorably one of the people not picked in Survivor Palau, partially because her singing. I mean, I have a couple clips I can choose from. Uh, For this sake, though, let's go to the finale the reunion of survivor palau when jeff does see the floor to wanda Mm -hmm. come back and give sort of like a musical reprise so this is wanda coming up with a song about survivor to the tune of oh susanna we were stranded on palau and shores with coconuts and rats we survived the heat found some food to eat and some survived the spats we're survivors, we faced and passed the test. And in history, all the world will see that Survivor 10 was best. Yeah. No, you're done. <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> Jeff, the best part. <laughs> you're done. Oh, you're done. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> oh, it's all too bad. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And <laughs> with all due respect to Wanda, we will find out uh, sometime around uh, the end of September if Survivor Ten is best. Okay? Yeah, exactly. So don't don't put that prediction. <laughs> we'll out make that for call. Wanda. That's not that's not for you to decide, Wanda. With all <laughs> I, due respect, I love that Russ Landau and the band attempt to backfill. Right? You could hear <laughs> the piano start to come in, like they're trying to to, to like, make this, this a thing. <laughs> and then Jeff says, "No, no, stop it! Get him out of here!" <laughs> hmm. So. Two amazing things about this, and one of them is actually not included in the clip, but I need to make sure that it is known to everyone in case they can't remember. Before she starts, Jeff asks, like, or Jeff, you know, Jeff acknowledges she's got a song written, ready for ready for everyone to hear, and he says, oh, I hope it's short. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he's so happy. As soon as she takes a pause, she's not even necessarily done. He's like, oh, you're done. This is great. You're I done. Really she needs to yes. breathe. Wow. Fantastic. All right. Coming yes. up next, what happened yeah. to Greg? <laughs> the, the blatant disrespect, Jeffrey. Oh, my goodness. Mm, so, yeah. obviously, this came from the fact that in the premiere of Survivor Palau, for those that don't remember... As they're paddling the boat, because all 20 contestants got to paddle the boat in together, Wanda is standing up 
singing, I believe it's a parody of Heart and Soul about Survivor. And I think Willard said he wants to, what, he wanted to smack her with the oar because she's just blaring loudly like a megaphone while everyone's paddling. Unfortunately, at least we're led to believe it causes her to not be one of the ones picked for a tribe. She is eliminated. And on her drive out with Jonathan Libby, uh, she then sings a parody of, I believe, Maria called Survivor with her fists raised triumphantly in the air like she's Richard Nixon getting on Air Force One. <laughs> The great thing about about this is that like everyone's in the boat like you know paddling and like she's like in like she's standing up and like rocking her body with her like like probably just making the whole situation so much harder for everyone like forget the singing just the bodily motions of it all and the fact that she's just straight up standing up and messing up the like you know the weight distribution the motion of the uh, ocean the motion of the ocean, exactly. <laughs> now, it's interesting, though, because, again, if we're talking about someone ahead of the trends, did Wanda predict the sea shanty trend on TikTok? Oh. How so? <laughs> I mean, she's on the sea. She's, mm -hmm. she's singing a shanty here. Actually, let me that play. Shanty, very shanty-esque. Let me, let me play. Let's see if we can discern this as a sea. A she, that, 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 that. See? See? Wanda! And we're sitting there on a really hot day, rowing the boat, and this lunatic jumps up and starts singing the song. I want to knock her off with the oar. I mean, at first she thought, oh, that's so cute. Look, Wanda singing. Oh, how and then she just kept going and going and going. And everybody was just like, is she going to stop? We are survivors! I've written a bunch of songs for Survivor, and I'm all about just being one big party as long as it lasts. It didn't last long. It did not last <laughs> long. It was, yeah. Is is that a shindig, a soiree, a party? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. What is the classification of Wanda's Survivor party? Hmm. Um, a lot, I it's love a lot of songs. It's, it's, Wanda Survivor Party is someone who pulls out the guitar and says, "Like, all right, everybody, who's in for Wonderwall?" That's that's Wanda Survivor Party. I feel like that maybe is to come. But... Wonderwall. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also really enjoyed the editing of of this moment because you've got um, like Willard, you know, saying that he's going to hit her with an oar, which yikes. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I can't remember who. Was it, I think it was Kobe. Was it Kobe? Yeah, it's Kobe. Yeah. And uh, like, and you can hear they still have her in the background, like yeah. singing as like, they're giving their specials. So no, no, Jeff Probst can go in and say, "Okay, you're done." Like she's you're done. Going. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They gave her the full Tom time. Tom just said that on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wanda is an icon, and yeah. uh, she has uh, been a big part of all of our lives for uh, from Survivor Palau through the evolution strategy, through the wand off. And uh, we stand a <laughs> singing musical queen. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So that yeah. being said, bottom line, number one so far, I think bar none, uh, mm -hmm. because for the record, this is the only survivor contestant that the edit is making us believe to, to, to make us think that the reason this person was, was voted out of the game of survivor essentially was because they were singing too much. And that is the most unique way I've ever think, thought of in general of a way a Survivor contestant can leave the game. And if we're talking about musical moments, you have to give it to her, even just purely based yeah. on that. All right. It's an interesting case. Uh, I probably uh, wouldn't have started there, but I mean, she is the only Survivor who is known for that she's the lady that sing, sang the, all those songs. That's her whole storyline. You know what I mean? Like that is literally the the whole story of her her uh survivor party if you will and um you know we we've seen that sometimes jeff does not give uh the time of day to first boots or you know ones that don't even end up getting to play the game and while he it pained him deeply as we as we heard he did <laughs> like allow her her moment like this is wanda um, there's nothing else that we can associate her with from her time on Survivor. So I just feel like if we're really ranking uh, musical moments on Survivor, like she really does embody that. Hmm. Okay. And look, you know what? Let's let's evoke some timeliness here. It's the time of Wanda in more ways than one. Let's yes. put a Wanda in the top here. There you go. 
I had uh, suggested to Josh Wiggler that it would be a compelling interview if he could get Wanda Shirk to review WandaVision. Mm, interesting. What would she say? Uh, Does she, would she get through, it? Through yeah. musical form specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's really hooked. I, you know what? I, as much as I love uh, the Lopez couple that wrote all those theme songs for WandaVision, bring in Wanda Shirk. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if Disney had been under the Paramount Mountain, maybe they would have gotten that in-house talent. Yeah. Okay. Michael, where are we going next? Well, speaking of in-house talent, so two seasons later, actually three seasons later, we had a similar Survivor contestant who also went out in episode one by the name of Seku Bunch. Seku Bunch, by profession, was a musician. And so, like Jenny said, Jeff at this time was being rather charitable with giving time to early boots on the reunion. Sure. And so a unique opportunity presented itself. What if Seku Bunch not only wrote an original song about Survivor, but performed it in the lead-up to a commercial break during the Survivor Cook Islands 1 reunion? Here is what happened. He was first off... But so enthusiastic, he wrote a song about Survivor. He is sitting in with our favorite Survivor. You're about to feed everybody! David Van Der Kort, Russell Landau, the Survivor House Band. Take it. Woo! It's time to say farewell to all your family and friends. Are you ready for the game to begin? You start to wonder if you stand a chance to win. Survivor! Come on, everybody sing! Survivor! Come on, everybody clap your hands! Survivor! Uh, <laughs> why, was, why was this not the theme song for the show moving forward? <laughs> it's a great question. It's a great question that they could have used it. They could have used that song that this is like, I think that they did not have a question for Seku, but they're like, uh, all right, what if we let you sing your song? Yeah. I got some lyrics about leaving your friends and family behind <laughs> going mm -hmm. on to an Island. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll throw you out there for 30 seconds. Uh, and, if, and Jeff will cut you off if you exceed the time limit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. This is one of my favorite survivor. Let's say survivor reunion moments ever. Yeah. Um, I love this so much. Um, far before we were uh, ever creating wand offs, myself and Colin Latchford would just sing this to each other. Like, and and all it is is survivor, <laughs> survivor, and like we'll just text it to each other. Sometimes, like years later, how, how does that me, go in a text? Well, you so you have to. It's like so. It's like all caps survivor, and then lower caps survive like, oh, uh, like yes. yeah um I, oh, is it's that what so the linkedin message me. i have from colin latchford means it, it may be <laughs> wait so are there are there no it, musical emojis affiliated with it you just text in all caps survivor and you're to assume that the lower caps mean the reprise of it and you also have an ellipsis so it's like for the pause because like <laughs> The clapping in there i mean mm -hmm. it's oh, you, can, you can put in parentheses though uh everybody join in because i believe yes. that's what seku yells even though it's a brand new song he's encouraging everyone I, to join in. i love that you know Sing this one everybody we exactly literally know. don't <laughs> guess how i this. say survivor next like just give it a try it, well, it'll so, work yeah gabriel cade uh did not do survivor 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 <laughs> so seku has that predictability Mm -hmm. that, that yeah. is true i also love uh somebody scream yeah. <laughs> like it's a like it's a what, like like it would have been me i would have been ah! Ah! but i will say so jeff has has come you know some way from wanda in the reunion where you really felt like he was being nudged into it. And he's like, oh, God, I guess I guess I'll let, let Wanda Shirk sing her song. But, oh, my God, it better be short. To this time, he, you know, he, not only is he letting Seku sing, he's giving him the backing band. He's really, like, making a moment of it. He's, so, you know, clapping along with it. Um, so I feel like he maybe learned that maybe he, he didn't give Wanda her full moment the way mm. that he should have, mm -hmm. um, at the Palau reunion and that he, he comes around and gives it to Seku perhaps, Wanda or maybe whispered. he's just more of a Seku fan. 
Wanda whispered so, so Seku could scream. That's where it ended up being. He's like, all right, I think we can do this. Yeah. Maybe Wanda led to the casting of Seku. They said, we need more musical survivor we singers. Stars. We if need more we... musical first boots. <laughs> if we ever have another live know-it-alls, I'm, I'm definitely going to use the somebody scream. <laughs> and then just to ah! do, the hung, do the hung scream from Amazing Race 32. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be... <laughs> That'd be uh, fantastic if we could get that. Uh, just uh, hey, so uh, somebody scream! <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> if we could get that. Uh, just uh, <laughs> hey, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right. That being said, I checked out uh, Seiku Bunch. Uh, that Seiku Bunch has a uh, 1991 CD called Seiku. Uh, oh. With a bunch of tracks, including uh, Pastels, uh, Night in the Town, as a matter of fact, and uh, Dolphin Dance. <laughs> oh, is, that an Ian, is that an Ian Rosenberger parody? Maybe. And, and then and he has a song called What? Question mark, Mr. Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not available here. What? You have to buy the CD. <sighs> I just Bro, thank you, everybody. Well, uh, well, you know, I, I got to review the discography of one Enzo Palumbo, aka DJ Squall, and uh, most of most of his tracks were just like spoken word snatches of conversations. Maybe that's what I, Mr. Bunch was just saying, being like, mm -hmm. "Who are you? What? What? Mr. Bunch? I'm Mr. Bunch. Yeah. Somebody scream! <laughs> yes. What? Uh, you can get it on Amazon Music if you want. Okay. Well, I'll look into that maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Survivor song, though, is like it's very, like I said, very important to me. Jenny, are you gonna put this in the top tier? You can put this worth playing oh. for. Listen, I will. I, like, I'm not gonna force your hands. I'm only one vote on this here panel. Somebody no, scream! So scream! I will scream for him. <laughs> <laughs> I will scream. Uh, I um, mean, I, I definitely, I, I'm keen to put this at least in my life is fine. Because I think this is, it's very iconic for the person. Granted, I think it's less memorable than something like Wanda from a fellow first boot. But like, this is such an incredibly surreal moment. And I think it's evocative of those middle eras of Survivor where there was so much weird stuff going on. Of Yeah, we'll yeah. let her first boot sing an original song about the show at the reunion using the house band. Whatever. <laughs> sure, sure. Because I think they yeah, would probably play out to go to commercial anyway. They're like, eh, let him do it. Whatever. And like the cast is like clapping along awkwardly. Like, here's the thing. I know there's no way I'm getting this up into worth playing for. And I understand that to most people, it is not as iconic as like Sonia. So if you want to leave it right where it is right there in my life is fine. That is my life will also be fine. I just want it said. I want it on the record that this is very, very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Mm. And I love Seku Bunch. To the okay. point where Jenny I'm, does know the word. She will fill in the blank when Seku asks. Yeah, I will scream. I will. And I will know how to say Survivor. And I know how to text it to somebody. Yeah. Throw in maybe the music emoji at the end. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Seku would be thrilled if he knew. Add well, him to the text chain. Someone let him know. I Add don't him know. to the group text. It's still relevant to me in 2021. Yeah. But if you add him to the group text, please greet him with what? Mr. Bunch? Yes. And <laughs> name the group text the Seiku bunch also. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Mike, are you good with this or do you want to adjust? I, no, I'm I'm perfectly fine with putting him right behind Sonya. Actually, it actually looks like Sonya and Seiku are like collaborating with yeah, the way talking. the pictures are facing <laughs> each other. It looks so good. Okay. Bye bye blues featuring Seiku Bunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go to our next moment. All right. So we're actually taking a large leap here we are going to the clip show of survivor samoa now i did not get betsy singing the cops theme song but i did capture the enigmatic shambo or shambo as eric cardona would call her and i think true to the show she was on she sings some survivor as well but maybe in a different way than seiku this is how they actually close out the clip show of survivor samoa it's the eye of the tiger it's the thrill of the fight rising up to the challenge of our rival it's the last known survivor at the end of the night <laughs> 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 
I, I just gotta say, I I really love Shambo. I really I love Shambo. I yeah. do too. Yes. I love the do do do. Like anytime that that also makes the cut, it's just like mm, chef's kiss mm -hmm. to me. Well, I think lyrics it's, are hard. It's even yeah, they're hard. It's even veering off the road at a certain point where she goes, "It's the last known survivor at the end of the night." I think it's what she said. Sure. Yeah. In the in the video version, and you everybody can, you can see her wheels turning, trying to figure, like trying to remember, like she's <laughs> actually like, uh, I think that's the next word. <laughs> and everybody knows that the next lyric is actually the last known survivor. It is Natalie White. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you study Edgic specifically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you uh, must look for the Edgic right now <laughs> on Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shambo, who uh, that T Bird got very close to a talking with oh. T Bird uh, with her once upon a time. T Bird put in hours on the phone <laughs> with Shambo. Is it Shambo being to like convince her? And it's now what was that lyric again? Oh come on, it's hours, exactly what that line hours was. that T Bird oh call God. called and called and called to the point where. That uh, uh, that Shambo agreed if T Bird flew to her house <laughs> and did the interview in person, <laughs> and T Bird was telling me she was like, she was like, okay, and now Rob, I didn't tell her that you're on the show, so we'll just like <laughs> like you ambush her. I'll tell with her that you're my co-host. I was like, that's fine. I, I don't have to talk. I don't know. Do you there. guys have beef? I don't understand. No, I don't know. It was like the T-Bird was like trying so hard to reel her in. And eventually she decided she didn't want to do it. All but. right. I love how I'll, like I'll the bargaining your... chip is like, I'll come to your house. Like it's yes. like, I'll, like I'll invade your space. All right. Yeah, I think do that was figure... Shambo's suggestion. I think you're going to have, okay. you're gonna have to pull a date line. We're going to have to do this interview in person. please. Yeah. And t was like, I'll, I'll go if you want me to. I'm like, we're not, uh, t -Bird, we don't need to do that. We don't need to <laughs> go there in person. t used to flying in many capacities. One -on -one I, think, uh, I don't want to go that far for an in-person interview pre -COVID. with Shambo. It was pre-COVID. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Uh, that is incredible. I'm yes. sad now, to be honest. But... T-Bird, she'll go anywhere for the interview. But uh, it didn't work out with Shambo. Okay. But maybe we get her to call in and sing. Okay, maybe she'll finally get That's that lyric. Yes, maybe we'll get her <laughs> yeah. on the next uh, Mask Survivor. Okay. Yeah, All right. When she's of right mind and fed and not, you know, on an mm -hmm. island, she might. No, you, she you, might. She, she, she really definitely give it. away. No, I think she'd give it away, though, Rob, because she'd be like, uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star, dot, dot, do, 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 car. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's got to be Shambo. <laughs> yeah, those are the lyrics. Okay. All right. Uh, this is uh, ratchet, but. It shouldn't be in Forget You Go Home Goodbye, I don't think. Yeah, I right? feel like this, this feels distinctly separate from Scout. Scout is, is funny because it's included with like the Sarge dynamic. This is funny on its own because A, it's Shambo, and B, she forgets the lyrics halfway through the song yet still commits to finishing it. And you can tell even without seeing her that she's having a moment with it. There's like a little pause. Um, so it's not she's even laughing. something that relies. She's laughing with it, yeah. Yeah. Does not it, it doesn't even fully rely on the video component to get the like the humorous piece across. So I that's definitely why I I would put it above Scout. Okay, above Scout. All right. So at least now we're so now we're in the era of okay. I think it's got to be better than like fine and forgettable, right? Mm, yes. Is it it's Shambo versus Shapera? Okay. Who wins and, the battle of the shishes? Yeah. <laughs> Is this the them all. <laughs> best of three subpar performances of Jerry, Gabriel, and Shambo? Oh, that's, I mean, this is oh, really splitting hairs. I would definitely group these three together. I think the question is, where does she fall? Is she in the middle of this sandwich or is she at the top? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's at the top of this. What do you think, Jenny? So between Sean and Jerry is what you're saying? I think she's ahead of Jerry. I, I would put her Jerry, yeah, saying, mm, behind, Sean, behind Sean, Sean, Shambo, Rector, Jerry, and then yeah. yeah, okay. Um, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine I keeping mean, this for now. The thing here's the thing is like it's it's in a confessional. It's so it's it's lacking the audience, which is mm -hmm. part of what I really enjoy about the um the Jerry clip 
and um, also like the the uh, you know participation of the rest of the tribe in the Gabe Cade clip. Um, so it's a it's a lot more standalone for me, but mm -hmm. I I don't know. I think it does speak for itself a little bit more than the other two. So I th I think I can I can live with this. All right, and I do like the fact that this is like she is literally singing the band Survivors song yes. on the show it, Survivors, exactly. and, yeah. and she knows it's so clever. Like, oh, let me do this. Like, I bet I bet y'all never done this before, and then yeah. she completely realizes. Does she know through. that, Mike? I well, well, I think at the that's the thing. Why there is mention of the survivor in the song. I I would hazard to guess Shamble does not know that the name really? of the band is Survivor. See, I thought that that's exactly why she's singing it because I mean, like, why else? It's such a random. Well, it's not like that random. No, of I don't know. Unless Shambo's in another outtakes going like, I'm a survivor. I'm not gonna give <laughs> up. I died to do do. I'm going work barter. <laughs> I need that one next, actually. <laughs> yeah, Shambo covers uh, Destiny's Child. Yeah. Yes. Well, the chorus of the song is uh, about the being the last known survivor. So it's also in the song. Yeah. So you're on Survivor. She could like the song. I don't know if it's necessarily because I'd like, hey, you know that band Survivor? They've got that song, Eye of the Tiger. I don't know. I think someone who uh, I'll, I'll ask T Bird to call her back and see. Yeah, think, yeah. at least get that answer. <laughs> I'll be like T Bird. All right, here's what you're gonna do: that like, tell Shambo <laughs> that you're doing a quiz. Okay, you're gonna tell her the name of a song, and she has to tell you who the artist is, and we'll give you like ten, and then see if she knows this one. Yeah, I think we'll play that game on the podcast. Yeah, someone who puts their mullet on a pedestal, there is a 95% chance that they are aware of the band Survivor. That's all that, I'm that, saying. It, it, yeah, it's an say, interesting like, debate. So, is, is it, 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 is Survivor it a uh, an 80s band? Yeah, is it, is that okay? Yeah, so I feel like I feel like everything lines up that I'm pretty sure that she's being cheeky here. She knows the band Survivor, um, and, and that is, is why she's singing this particular song interesting okay. even if she doesn't fully know the lyrics <laughs> all right mike what's next we're going to the very next season and we're going to ponderosa folks the moment you have been waiting for is here we're talking about the dragons now look i have a full like two and a half minute clip that involves a little bit of a babble before they get into the music video for their song i think it's like uh pack the dance floor or, or something like that so i'll play a little bit of it i won't play the full thing but let's get a taste of the dragons and the musical prowess they were able to craft and sculpt during the Ponderosa of Heroes vs. Villains. The Dragon Slayer. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the lead vocalists for the Dragons. New band on the scene. You're about ready to watch our first of hopefully many videos on the dance floor. Yeah, uh, there's a little bit. We, got, we got, it. got it. JT has a little guitar solo in the middle of yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. There's a whole EP, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so yes. I, I do believe that. I think Coach was it this week announced that there would be yes. an EP of the Dragons wow. coming out. Okay. So talk again. Talk about synergy. synergy. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's all happening. Yeah, he Dalton knew. Ross. Uh, I believe uh, early in last year, uh, mm -hmm. during the the like. Uh, very beginning of quarantine that he released the uh full like uh i, I don't know it's like hundreds of, of well i don't know if it's hundreds of pages very long 
Very long. Hundreds <laughs> yeah, of words. No, it, it's an oral history of the dragons, yeah. essentially. It, it tracks yeah. it from when it was initially conceived, when it was just coach fooling around playing rock band, to the band's conceptualization, to bringing in outside of its trio the likes of Amanda Kimmel, Candace Cody, DDL, even Rupert on a couple of background growls, to the time that they tried to all wear their dragon shirts to tribal council and they were mm-hmm. banned from doing so and coached yeah. to a hissy fit. Uh, to the- it's incredible. The The oral history of the dragons uh, is, yeah. is insane because I, I, Coach took it I, so seriously. I say with no impunity that I think this might be Dalton Ross's greatest work. Uh, mm-hmm. It is just, <laughs> it is a fantastic highlight about how much everyone committed to the bit and then some. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think in some ways, I think the oral history of the dragons has superseded the dragons. Might be a hot take. I, mm. I, I can, I can, I can subscribe to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, and in the I same mean, way, the oral history of the sleepover podcast superseded the actual right. sleepover podcast. That yeah, was but, recorded. but it's not like there's a, there is a recording of this, of this song. We just heard it. It's unlike the sleepover podcast <laughs> where the audio was disappeared due to, I think, uh, well, I maybe, have yeah. protest yes and uh on the um entertainment weekly uh youtube page you can find i think i think it's five song it's a five song ep that they yeah. of, of songs they actually recorded and mm-hmm. they're all special in their own way like yeah i do believe there there is a rap for coach like i'm my, my name is Co- my name is coach chisel like I'm, I'm do great with the bizzle like they're they actually do write lyrics for themselves mm-hmm. and and courtney's like every every line courtney raps is about uh having double d's or buying double d's or pop popped double d like it's it's very please go listen to this whole ep if you do mm-hmm. nothing else yes this okay. evening or whatever maybe she's referencing this. danielle de lorenzo i would imagine the yeah. Yeah. What if that that she, she literally just missed her fellow villainess so much yeah yes okay <laughs> all right so it's interesting uh the dragons as a concept I think it's also better than the dragons as a musical performance. I mean, it is truly ludicrous that jurors got together and said, we're going to form a band and record original music. Mm-hmm. We're going ludicrous to make was up a- involved in this project. I missed it. Yeah. I mean, there, there was exactly ludicrous. <laughs> I've got coach. <laughs> I've got coach. <laughs> so, you know, to, to have this actually conceptualized and have it turn into, this really was the first big Ponderosa moment. I feel like that everybody, even back in 2010 was talking about like, yeah, these three survivors made a band and they released a music video. They talk about it and the oral history about how just OTT it was. And the fact that they actually went through with this is it, it's just so ridiculous to talk about even years after the fact. And mm-hmm. three of like the strangest people to ever put together. Like that I think is, is part of the beauty of it. It's like cor- coach Courtney Yates and JT Thomas. Like, like imagining these three people even speaking to each other, let alone coming together for a yeah. musical project. Yeah, I think uh, J- just I'm glad JT Amazing. doesn't sing because he essentially is the equivalent of Shannon go- uh, Shambo going do, 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 just marble <laughs> mouth completely over the entire track. Mm-hmm. I love that Courtney's like, and occasionally JT comes in with a harmony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's more of the guitar guy, but I also believe yeah. <laughs> the Dragons music video is truly a sight to behold. There's some great shots of the three of them on the rocks. Also, uh, them committing to like, I think it's Coach on the, they're, uh, he's on a drum set, but he uses the rock band drum set of like the, the electronic looking rubberized pads. So even though they're trying to come across as professional as possible, he's still playing yeah. with a child's video game toy. It's How dare you? Time. Not a child's video game. I played many hours of, of rock band as an adult. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the big board. All right. Where are the dragons going? Dragons are not ratchet, right? No. I'm okay. I'm going to I'm going to put in the I'm going to put in my argument here. I think this should be number 1. Better than Wanda. Better than Wanda. Now look. I this may be sacrilegious. To Rob has a podcast. But the dragons is a concept and an idea that is so incredibly memorable to me that the fact that three jurors in Ponderosa after being voted out said, let's not only form a band, but let's create an entire concept around it, create multiple tracks, involve other people, etc. It is, I think, one of the top tier Ponderosa moments ever. 
that has stood the test of time. And when we're thinking musical moments, I think look no further than either the woman who gets voted out of Survivor for singing too much or the group of Survivor contestants that started a band off yeah. of the show. Okay. I Let's... Argue, I argue, like I, I fully agree with what you're saying, Mike, and I think that it is a very, very valid point. But I, I personally still would put it behind Wanda simply because so much of its legacy is outside of the show itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just, I don't know. It's a very, very close two for me. It's very, mm-hmm. very close. But I think for me personally, it's absolutely worth playing for for me. I, I put it between Wanda and T-Bird. Hmm. Myself. Rob. Could Survivor's greatest musical moment have happened off of Survivor? That's a good question. It's a good question. Technically, it's it's not on Survivor. Those that did not check out Ponderosa wouldn't know this from Adam Klein specifically. But <laughs> it's a very good question. I would not quibble if it was number two, but I, I do feel like at least for those of us that were in the know about Ponderosa, this is just an mm-hmm. enigmatic moment that I think was only magnified further by the entire oral history depicting the process. Mm-hmm. And Some then of it's one- talked about to this day, clearly. I mean, coaches discussing, you know, new music coming out from the Dragons. Like, the relevancy is, you know, is it, mm. ha- it has lasting power. Yeah. I do believe that a lot of Wanda's impact was off of the show also. Mm-hmm. So right. That's a good point. to be fair. <sighs> I mean, <sighs> there was more work put into this than any of the other things that I mean, I don't know how much time Seiku spent in the studio and it's, yeah, on Survivor, well. Survivor. Just, just yeah. The fact that we get a music video out of this is that help or hurt it. I think it helps it just in terms of like the production that went on to form the moment, whereas a lot of these other moments are just off the cuff. I mean, Sonia probably spent some time uh, with a pen and a pad trying to come up with what was going on uh, in the Prozac song. Bye bye blues. Mm-hmm. I can live with it. Yeah, I'm I, here. Here's the thing: it's like I don't feel strongly enough about it to to stump. I think that, like, for me, Wanda and the dragons being in the top spot in some way is is mostly what I feel strong about. Mm-hmm. Um, I would just say I think I would personally maybe put it just behind Wanda. But if you guys feel like top spot, it does not. It, I'm good with it too. Yeah, the Wanda it does started deserve sing- to be up there. Wanda started singing. And the dragon said, "No, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> you're done." <laughs> okay. All right. We still have time to adjust it, but let's leave. Yeah. Let's try okay. the dragons in the top spot on right. and see how that feels. Uh, look, at, dragons- look at this. Look at this picture from the music video, and you cannot tell me that this is not top tier at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Coach <laughs> trying to do his best. Creed arms wide open, like yeah. unbuttoned shirt. Courtney's trying to sway the best she can, and JT's holding a guitar for no reason. Yeah, it's dragons. But- Wanda, T Bird, Casey Kasem are the top four right now. The guitar is very like 90s grunge to me too. So like, yeah, I'm really seeing Coach embodying like the Scott Stapp of it all. Mm-hmm. I guess Creed is maybe like early 2000s. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Time yeah. is a flat circle. Yes. Okay. Mike, what's <laughs> next? All right. So we're going to go a little bit off the beaten path here uh, where we're going to go to the next season, Survivor Nicaragua. And maybe this is a bit of a leftover, actually, Rob, from the previous podcast we did, memorable Jeff Probst moments. But LaFleur decides to do a chant as they walk into the first immunity challenge in the premiere of Survivor Nicaragua. And uh, it's a cold response, as much as Ogakor gives Jerry Manthe. But this is what LaFleur, the routine they attempt to work up when entering their very first challenge. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So hot. So hot. The floor is lava. Yes. (laughs) Got to recycle that one. Okay. (laughs) So. Yeah, that's. I feel like it's more of a dance than a song. It's more of like it a, is definitely a, a, a like number. we didn't put like a Earl doing the Mecca in the greatest musical moments. But I mean, there is chanting to it, right. They're vocalizing. Earl was not putting lyrics to this. They're still doing mm-hmm. like the who, ha, 
who when there is a le floor at the end of it, it's small. it's small. It's mm-hmm. small. It's sweet. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a small little bit of musicality to it. Okay. I mean, if you're just hearing this audio only, uh, the the chanting part is very strange sounding until you until you can put together what's actually happening. Oh, really? Let's listen uh, to it again. Uh, okay. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, are we are sure? We sh- are we sure that uh, this wasn't the audio pulled from somebody's Lamaze class? <laughs> ah, La Flor Lamaze. Mm-hmm. Lamaze. Maybe this was Brenda, oh. in, in, not Ooh. from Nicaragua, but from right before she had her baby at the uh, Caramoan uh, reunion show. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the baby comes out and they name it La Flor. That was actually the it was a birthing tape. <laughs> Yeah. Do we know, did uh, LaFleur Tribe do this every time they came in? Or do you think that Jeff Probst was like, uh, you're done? No, I'm pretty <laughs> sure Jeff's very tepid response really yeah. nipped out of the bun. They're like, okay, I guess we won't do that again. Yeah, imagine mm-hmm. thinking that that went great after that response. Yes. <laughs> you know, well, we I, should well, try no, because I, I, I think, and Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, you watched the season more recently than I do. I believe for the second immunity challenge, it said they just march in unison and then like, put their heads down, pick them up and go the floor. So they tried a different thing. Less so the like camp color war. Ooh, we're the yellow team. Yes, we're the yellow team. Yes. Um, Mike, did you see then when a spada countered at the next tribe, uh, <laughs> next challenge where they came in line dancing? Yeah, they were actually dancing to the YMCA in true <laughs> to, their, uh, to their age bracket. And unfortunately, I did not include Jimmy T singing American Girl in this countdown. <laughs> okay. All right. My okay. name is Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't know. What were we calling this? The chant? No, I just called it LaFleur chant. LaFleur chant. LaFleur chant. Uh, okay. Get, All right. get, on, get on LaFleur. Okay. From All right. The floor to on LaFleur. <laughs> there we go. All right. Is this ratchet? I don't know. What do you yes. think, Jenny? <laughs> yes. <laughs> More ratchet than Scout. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, Jenny, say so this is the bottom. It's just it's the, not the, really a musical. It's not really a musical moment. Mm-hmm. It's it, it it is very much accompanied by the yeah Dan- whatever that he had this a little dance. bit in noticeable hats where there were things like mm-hmm. that's not a hat like <laughs> is this, this is yeah. not a song is this the phillips feather of this list <laughs> yes yes I, I agree now this isn't <laughs> like, a song it shouldn't be here <laughs> you're saying la flor like counts as a song i mean at least scouts like weird spooky spoken word song thing it was a little bit more musical than the la flor chant so for me it, this is yeah this is what what doesn't help going. it what definitely puts Shapera above this as a tribe is that everyone on Shapera is participating all the floor i think most <laughs> of them played against, I, you, you can't tell me sue hawk was singing along no i way. think she was chant like no way wearing her brains out sue uh, hawk did not participate <laughs> in any group activity arms crossed <laughs> i want to know yeah we, she ever wouldn't seen eat with us. She did her own thing the whole time. She was not singing a song. But at least we didn't see that in the way that we see like Shannon Elkins and Chase Rice, ironically enough, not participate in the chanting mm-hmm. here. They were not in on the group activity. And that's more visible to me. Mm-hmm. Like they're the ones I think Shannon actually like shakes his head like look at this BS as everyone's trying to do it, which I believe it's only the women in Fabio who attempt to do this entire thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fabio's really into it. It's what, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like you can definitely hear the conversation of just like, oh man, I really don't, I really don't want to do this, like, or mm-hmm. like you know, it's like it's like you know, like a school play production where like one person's like barely doing the hand mm. motions because they're so embarrassed by like what's happening, but they're like just trying to like play along. Yeah, I do not have the cohesive nature here. So I think it belongs on the bottom. Absolutely. Because uh, I think that in both cases, the humor actually comes from not necessarily the song, but the response to the song in both Sarge staring daggers at Scout and Jeff's K 
okay. in response yeah. to to Lafleur trying their thing. So <laughs> I, I I agree, it's definitely in the bottom tier. And Jenny's argument swayed me. I'm I'm fine making this the fine. bottom pick right now. Fine, you're the worst. <laughs> we have a new Lafleur. <laughs> exactly. Much right. like uh, Dalton Ross's survivor rankings, Nicaragua's at the bottom right now. <laughs> Is it, that that can't be right? Yeah. Uh, well, it was until Island of the Idols. Yes, Nicaragua yes. was his um, up until okay. then was his least favorite season. Okay. All right. Let's go well, back to the uh, the lineup. What do you got, Mike? Well, let's go from the lineup to perhaps a line dance because Chase <laughs> Rice might not have participated in the floor champ, but he says, you know what? I got a beat in my heart. I'm just a race car driver man changing jacks. He's a, he's a jack years. man. He's a jack man. Dwee dot dot that dot means dot dot. something else to me. <laughs> he's Hugh Jackman, if you will. But the greatest showman decides to, to make his appearance here in the reunion of Survivor Nicaragua, where once again, Jeff seeds the floor to a contestant, says, hey, mm -hmm. Chase, I hear you've been working on some stuff, even though you lost the game as a consolation prize. Why don't you do a little ditty for us here on the reunion? And once again, Mike Sekou, Chase Rice, is going to take us into the commercial break. Chase, give us just a, just a taste of something that you've written. All right, we wrote this... Uh last week and uh it's called buffs back it's on we recorded ep on thursday so uh, that's gonna be out soon so this will be the first single 11 so uh, 9 a.m came way too fast my head's pounding like a dynamite try to sleep on saturday this ain't no wish you're having this way the good thing the dogs are playing you tea on the tv because that's reason enough for me to get a six pack of remedy i get my push back and i'm feeling all right Ain't wow no chase sounded pretty good from up here on the stage still to come tonight one of the most despised survivors ever nayanka and one of the season's most likable james plus one of the season's biggest underdogs holly and find out how survivors save jimmy johnson's life we're alive and Hollywood, it's the Survivor Nicaraguan Reunion Show. Pick it up! Uh, let's get weird. Somebody scream! <laughs> Somebody scream because you won't wear a mask at my concert. <laughs> Jeff was really adding his own lyrics to that and just shouting over it. Yeah. So They're like, all right, cut his, cut his audio. Awesome. No, my, Jeff, uh, no, did Jeff say the opposite? Did he, did he say, like, kick it up? I think is what he said to Chase after he finished his little uh, spiel, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <gasps> so got my buzz back. Was this a single for Chase Rice? Did this go on to be a uh, a hit? I don't know. Is this on his album? I'm not sure, actually. Should I check Spotify to see if like this is one of his uh buzz, buzz my haircut? Buzz my, my buzz haircut. Up. I think the song <laughs> is about like uh the day after you drink, I think you they start drinking again. Oh uh, buzz, buzz back, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. gotcha. So it's like, oh, you're feeling hungover? Drink, uh, you know, hair of the dog and get back to it. Yes, yes, a little bit. I think yeah. that's what the song's yeah. about. So there you go. Okay. All right. So, I mean, this was fine. That uh, The trajectory of Chase Rice's career, I think, is interesting. We talked about this uh, last week where that I don't think it was like that uh, people heard him on the Survivor uh, <laughs> the, the, the Survivor <laughs> finale and then it was sort of like, uh, like, hey, it's your cousin uh cousin marvin like uh yeah. you gotta listen to this marvin travis well mm -hmm. listen to this mm -hmm. yeah well like the the funny thing is is like he, like the conversation with jeff before he lets him sing is very much just like has this helped you at all and he's like no not really <laughs> no not i was shown as a, a waffler who was dumber than a bag of hammers anyway <laughs> here's my ep yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all right. Uh, it was it was interesting. Chase Rice. There it is. Uh, and then he, and he got he got the audience clapping. Unlike Sekou, he did not need to encourage them to do so. Yeah. So <laughs> I think even right. Jeff might have been clapping. So yeah, Jeff seemed into it. Jeff seemed into it. Yeah. I, get, I don't know if he's he had that much guy, to ask Chase. 
Yeah. That's true, actually. Like, oh, we don't have much to ask him. Well, you know what? Uh, let's just have him play a little bit. That'll we be, have that'll as be much to... to talk to you about as the first boots of multiple seasons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's 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 interesting because especially like you said, Rob, the, the trajectory of Chase's career, this wasn't a way his coming out party in that he wanted to pursue a career. This was not like the Cochrane, right, of, oh, we noticed this, therefore we're going to give you a country music career. But is it, it is interesting, he's going to go on to be arguably one of Survivor's most successful alumni as a result. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, I think it's an interesting list of Survivor's most successful alumni, and uh, he may be number one. I, I think there's a very, very good chance he could be number one just by pure net worth. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are we measuring, you were measuring success by net worth? or followers i don't know uh i measure it by i don't mean to get like Jenny. philosophical yeah. here yeah exactly yes. <laughs> I, me I measure it by how much prozac do you have to take to mm -hmm. say bye bye blues <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. yeah okay all right so let's look at the big board with uh chase rice all i right. also love how jeff uses i mean it's interesting he did not use maybe because uh chase's song was more down tempo with just a guitar he did not use seku's song to be like Coming up next, we're talking with Candace and Adam. Are they still Many together? Many people were he, screaming. He used uh, <laughs> Chase's song as a backing track to talk about Nayanka and Jane and Holly and how Jimmy Johnson would have died were it not for Survivor. Mm hmm. Yeah. All yeah, right. I love the play. Play your song while I shout over you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Ratchet. Mm -mm. So I feel no. like that if I was going to place this, like Chase Rice goes on to be famous and a big huge hit uh but i don't know necessarily if it's it's not because of this moment and so i feel like to me it's like in the sean rector area of hmm. like here's somebody that's singing a, a song well that's not super you know uh majorly iconic for in terms of the show yeah, I mean, it's a good question. Is this an iconic Chase Rice moment? The, the, in the I mean, career yeah. in the, or the Survivor history? Of the Survivor history. Yeah, from Only career, more? from Survivor, like, lens, yes. Hmm. In his full career as a musician, likely not. <laughs> yeah, what's the buzz on Buzz Back? Mm -hmm. Chase Rice, <laughs> Buzz Back. Is buzz Back one word or on, two? It, come, it comes back up on Spotify. Yeah. Oh. Yes, there's a video for Buzz Back. Is it in his This Is Chase Rice is the question. Like, is it a big enough hit? <laughs> I do love the albums yeah. that 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 make remind you who the artist is, right? Yes. Although, no, I don't think it's a, I don't know if it would say uh, if it's a single. Um I think it's probably oh on an on an album, but I don't think it was a hit. He has a song called I Like Drinking cuz it's fun. <laughs> Where's the Listen, lie, Jenny? He sees not mean, exactly He's not exactly a uh, meta textual when it comes He's to very drawing metaphors. Buzz back mm. album version. So uh, to differentiate from the Survivor reunion version, live uh, unplugged. Is, yeah, yeah. I'm assuming, is he's, I'm on, assuming this is Chase Rice on. Spotify. Should he should he have thrown a couple of Survivor references in to the reunion version? <laughs> hmm. Going to wake I mean, up in Ponderosa. Jeff did, yeah. Jeff did the most despised yes. contestant ever. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah, I do see a music video for Buzz Back. Uh, in the music video, it looks like the plot is that uh, Chase is waking up after a night of drinking, hungover, mm -hmm. that he uh, that somebody has drawn on his face with a marker, uh, and then his friends come over, and they're watching a football game, and get, uh, like uh, they're going to just start drinking again. Boy. In there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody Relatable find someone king. that loves you as much as Chase Rice loves drinking. Okay. I'm curious. These songs, best beers of our life, Jack <laughs> Daniels and Jesus, beer yeah. with the boys. Oh, he's making out with somebody in the video. Is this a cry for help? Not Brenda. Should we have seen the signs the entire time of like this man is like singing about drinking just a little bit? I mean, too what's much? the help? They, they, he's doing great. He's, he's doing great. Help us, Chase PB, Rice. PBJs and PBRs is a song. Like, yes. like peanut butter and jelly and PBRs. That's a disgusting taste combination. Mike, he I has a brand. Don't, don't question it. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing great. <laughs> he does not waffle about one thing. Yeah, exactly. No yes. waffles. No, no, no waffles. PB That's a can. separate breakfast. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. He will give a straight answer. Yes, absolutely. I will. I will be drinking today.
Uh, okay. All right. So yeah, I mean, I'm Sean Rector, I, Chase Rice. I. It's tough because Sean's or, is more Sean's is more pertinent to Survivor, but Chase is more pertinent to the outside world. You know. Or should it be back to back with Seiko? Oh, that's a good question. Should we put yeah. reunion moments back to back? I like that idea. I mm. I actually like I actually like it there. That, yeah. Um, yeah, the bottom of life is fine Jenny, right after Seku. Dare I ask, should Seku Bunch be higher than Chase Rice? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> See, you knew the answer to that question, Rob. Sir, Seku goes Rob. through the graces of coming up know. with an entire song about Survivor. Chase, Chase couldn't even I, spare a couple of Survivor references in Buzz Back. I stepped back to allow Seku into My Life is Fine. We are not putting Chase effing Rice above him. I'm sorry. This is my hill I will die on. <laughs> Mm hmm. Yeah. OK. Uh, boy, I got the lyrics up for. Oh, yeah. Can you uh, can you read through some of that poetry? Back. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, seven digits sitting in my phone. The thought of her won't leave me alone. There was making out and making plans. And maybe tonight we can do it again. Whoa. I got the nerve to call her up and say it's me. Hey, cutie. How about a bottle of wine and a movie? Uh, could it be David versus <laughs> Nectar? Uh, Gulliver's Travels. <laughs> yeah, we're going to watch Jack in Jail. Then we're going to make out on the hill. <laughs> Drink a little more, then tumble down. Adam Sandler, he's such a clown. Yeah. Rob saying movie was shades of da Gabe Cade saying equator. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the emphasis, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trying to make it happen. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that nice uh, Cure to the Hangover song that we sang on the Survivor Nicaragua finale. All yeah, right. Who knew Chase Rice was the country chumba wumba? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what's next? All right, we're only going two seasons later, and we're going back to Ponderosa. We're putting a, a guitar in the hands of one Jim Rice. This is a moment, Rob, that you brought to light when yeah. Jim Rice appeared on the podcast once upon a time. The Savais, suffice it to say, were not happy with John Cochran after no. he flipped on them at the merge of Survivor South Pacific. Some chose to take it out on him verbally, like Whitney Duncan. Some, like Jim Rice, saved their ichor for Ponderosa. Cochran, you screwed me over. <laughs> me out of a million. <laughs> When I see you in a dark alley, I'll kick your ass. Thank you. There you go. Short, sweet. Not so sweet, actually. <laughs> It's not very sweet. <laughs> very sour. Yeah, uh, we got a lot of mileage out, out of this on the podcast. I don't know how iconic this is. Uh, Caffeine uh, says uh, number one, baby. I feel like it's like a cult hit, you know? Mm. Mm. I mean, this is a battle of the Rices. I didn't even mean to put Chase Rice and Jim Rice oh. back to back. <laughs> I didn't even put that together at all. Wow. If you're, Rice if you're Wars. <laughs> is that what we're thinking about in Redemption Island? Yeah, if your last one is Rice, uh, be prepared to put a guitar in your hand and make music happen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Jim Rice. Jenny, had you heard this song before? Oh, yes. Of course. Of course. I remember being so shocked by uh, his singing voice, like how high it went. Like, mm -hmm. it's... It's so good. I actually, uh, it. I find that it gets stuck in my head, even though it's like four lines. Like, yeah. like Cochran, you screwed me over. It's like, not even like melodic. That. It's just him like screaming yeah. like a bird. Yeah. I had it on the soundboard <laughs> for a while. That may be. Boring. Here we go. Cochran, you screwed me over. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god. I just love that it's like this placid, like nicely comped out chorus, then cock red. <laughs> it's so jarring and beautiful. Mm. Uh, and I, like it's fun. You no, know, he's it's fun. he's literally threatening violence. Yeah, if I yeah. see you in a dark alley, I'll kick your ass. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think I know what to do with this. Uh, All right, I'll give it throw, throw it out here, Rob. Okay. So to me, I feel like that the thing that this is the most similar to on the board is Shambo trying to sing the Eye of the Tiger. So it's like she's mm -hmm. by herself. She's making herself laugh. She doesn't really know the words. I feel like that I, this is in this ballpark. I think that's a reasonable ballpark. For me, I would put it 
above Shambo, at mm. least. Um, just because it's an original song. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And again, I know that I know that it's 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 Ponderosa. It's not a very well known moment um, in the wider community, perhaps. But like I said, it's a cult favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's simple. I don't know. I find it. I find it more memorable. But again, you know, lended by mm-hmm. Rob and the podcast. Yes. Th- this there, could be one uh, of the only ones that you could turn into a ringtone, right? It's only like thirty seconds long. Yeah, and I wonder, could we update it for uh, this year? COVID, you screwed us over. (laughs) When I see you from a social distance, I'll kick your ass. (laughs) My kids go to school on Zoom. Okay. I'll kick your ass if you're not wearing a mask. mask. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this could I be see a you nice at Chase pro- Rice's concert. Yeah. <laughs> this could be a nice pro mask PSA from Jim Rice. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I we need right bring now. It back. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like it here. I do feel like it sort of is in the same realm of Shambo of like if you're a, if, even if you're a devoted Survivor fan, you probably won't, won't remember it too much. But it's entertaining in its own right. We or like right. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mike. What's next? We're sticking with Ponderosa. We talked about one of the biggest Ponderosa moments ever. We got to skip ahead here to Rob, a character you're going to be talking about in five days time. I'm talking about the noble one, Chris Noble here at Ponderosa. Let's hear his official rap song that he not only uh, wrote and performed, but also created a full-fledged music video for during Survivor Ghost Island. Feeling like a boss as a mile of pop. The buzz so real, it's like we bottle pop. Choppers on deck, their hearts flush when they drop it. Straight calling dudes bluff when they body flopping. Check your back from that blind side. They say the DD's strong, but they change with the high side. The dark side, the low V with the black dot. The domino effect cost me a million in a swell eye. Living the dream, Mom Ponderosa. Swung for the fences, I call it Sammy Sosa. We juice all day and toss the corks in the roasters. Probes on deck, feel the burn when he hosts ya. Living the dream, Mom Ponderosa. Swung for the fences, I call it Sammy Sosa. We juice all day and toss the corks in the roasters. Probes on deck, feel the burn when he hosts ya. Life is a beach as I sit my corona. Survivor on my mind, that's why I ponderosa. It will toast ya, maybe bloat ya. Send you to the tribal where they roast ya. Oh sh, that dude might have ghost ya. Follow service all day, we stay VIP. Serve the finest lobster like Sad Bond D3. When things get hot, take a paddle to the sea. Unlock the door to freedom from my Florida key. On the jet ski, divide him to be. What happens on the island stays in PG. Vanaka. Great take, guys. Nailed it. Vanaka, indeed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, it's so good. You're trash. <laughs> Put the mic down, bro. I just realized uh, Chris Noble had a drink about sipping back and drinking Corona. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Got the buzz back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, lab waiting to happen yes i have to say i have not heard that in a while and listening to just the audio yeah i think wendell had a point <laughs> really i think the video oh, is great completely i, think, I, I, I completely the, agree completely yeah, the, uh, the, the video is incredible the music is trash no, what, it's honestly, trash. the music, it's, okay. it's so true. It sounds like, it sounds like, honestly, the equivalent of, like, Marty for class president. Here's a 10th grader being like, you should vote for me because I'll clean up the halls. I'll take everyone to the mall. Like, just coming up with the weirdest yeah. rhymes. Such a like, monotone delivery. With, like, <laughs> random references to things that were not even in the show. Like, uh, it was like yes. when, like, when Steph caught a lobster on day three. Like, that wasn't so he- even in the show. It's that interesting. Wasn't in the show. He, no favorite reference he, for that. 
He goes from saying, oh, uh, bot- like bottle, sir- we're popping bottles, like VIP bottle service. And then also Seb caught a lobster or a lobster and we ate it on day three. So it's like, he's like, are you in the club popping bottles VIP or are you on the island? Like it is, there is like a bit of a, con- like a confused narrative. I don't want to get too in the weeds of his lyrics yeah. because again, the, the great filthy, my partner in life and crime, uh, not really, but um, he, Good this save. is his bag. I don't want to step on his toes because I know that he, this is something that he's going to want to touch on um, this coming week. But he he does have like a couple zingers. Survivor on my mind. That's why I ponder Osa. That's a great yeah. one. That's okay. good. That's good. The okay. video is amazing. I also, the video is amazing. Video is incredible. Love, I also do love swinging for the sense fences. We call it Sammy Sosa. Like I know but that yeah, he, made, he makes a lot of basketball references. Now he's moved on to baseball. Yes. <laughs> he didn't need to talk about Sammy Sosa twice, though. It's the chorus, it's Rob. Of, it's part of his chorus yeah. or a bridge. I don't know. I can't really figure out the, uh, you know, yeah. the, co- the composition of these lyrics. But... Okay. All right. It's an amazing video. The the audio, the single, I don't know if it does much on its own. But uh, but the fact that it exists puts it in the top tier, in my opinion. And this is so thematic, right? This is a guy who did raps during the season. This is Wendell dissing him by decrying his rapping skills. And then that same night when Chris is voted out, you could go to YouTube and watch Chris produce a rap video on his own yeah. in Ponderosa. Rapping is part of the legacy of Chris Noble it has to be, at least in my opinion, number three. It has to be. I personally put him behind Wanda above a T-Bird. I, I really, yeah, I, I, I would not feel good about us allowing Dragons be the first spot, being Ponderosa heavily, you know, guided by the fact that it has a video component and not give Chris Noble his dues. Mm-hmm. And I, I really, I agree with Mike on this because again, I, I thought that I wanted to keep Wanda in the top spot. I feel good about Chris Noble in, in the third spot of worth. Okay. So Wanda is the meat of a Ponderosa bread <laughs> sandwich. Sure. Okay. And a hell of a piece of meat. She is it's dragons, a, a, Wanda, Chris Noble, <laughs> T-Bird, Casey Kasem in the top five, baby. And, and I might I be it. so bold as to say, I think this, this might be the cemented top five. We have two more to go yeah. after this. I do well, not you know, know what's if, still to come. I don't know that's if the other, squad. I don't know if the other two will make the top tier. Yeah. That okay. is squad. I'm, I think that's, yeah, I think that's I'm, a good top five. Squad baby. goals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is squad goals. All right, Mike, what's next? This is going to be a very, very short one, a very small one, if you will. We are going all the way forward to Survivor Winners at War. Uh, In episode three, I believe it was, Sandra catches a shark. Tony celebrates it with a a children's air room, and I'm pretty sure this one is actually for children. It's very small, but I wanted to make mention of it. Baby shark do 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 Sandra shark do 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 Yay! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. Yay! Yay! So, like, Tony, Tony gives me a little bit of, like, what I'm looking for in that he, he you know, he does the, the original, and then he, he, you know, he throws in his own, like, oh, Sandra shark, which, again, Tony Yay! calling Sandra... Tony calling Sandra Sandra anytime that happens is joyful for me. I, I think that that's hilarious. Anytime someone who spends very much time with somebody still cannot pronounce their name or has mm-hmm. their own interpretation on how they will pronounce their name. Um, and the yay is just beautiful. It's it's very short and sweet to me. It's, it's yes. seven seconds long. Yeah. Okay. Which All right. The time that Sandra sent, spent on the edge of extinction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this is a hard one to place. Right. It's it's, it it's a vine. It's the length of a vine. It's seven seconds it is. long. Mm-hmm. It is a vine. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at the board and see where it should go. It's not Ratchet. No. Yeah, I think it's at least in my life is fine. But I honestly would put it, I would be fine putting it like in the back of my life is fine. Like it's cute, not hot. Mm-hmm. I mean, not, not my life is fine. Sorry. Ain't no Hershey bar. Yeah, um, I'll say it's be- it's it's better than Shapira. Yeah, I think Randy Bailey I think did not say this was the worst moment in the history of the show. 
Maybe I don't know I Randy Bailey's feelings it. on that, but mm-hmm. yeah, I guess I mean if if he still feels that way about the Shapira. Yeah, he uh, says Sandra ate his chicken, but I think he likes her. Uh, I don't know yeah. how he feels about Tony. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, it's so hard because it is such a short moment. So mom or moment, but I just don't. Uh, I don't Unlike know. Unlike Gabriel's rapping, which went on forever. But I love that <laughs> though. I love I love the this, Jerry this, song. This stupid too long. creativity that went into went to out get on a high note, Matt. Like I think what? I put this behind Shambo. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think that it's a of baby shark twice. <laughs> yeah. But I think that it's more it, like again. Tony won the season. Um, it's one of the, you know, it it made the actual aired show. Yes. It it was um it was a moment, like a character a moment. moment of his winning game where it's like you see his social game early on where he's kind of being playful and silly. Um, so even though it's very, very short, I feel like there is like some importance to it. Also, we got that stupid song stuck in my head for like weeks after this mm-hmm. episode aired. Which yeah. I maybe is a reason to knock it down some, but I don't mind it. It's an earworm, unlike uh, Jennifer Lanzetti. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean Jerry's moment was in a secret scene uh, that I feel like it's better than Gabriel. All right, if you want to put it beyond uh, the shampoo and the shark, I guess we can we can put them together here. I mm-hmm. think I almost put it bef- like. Between Jim Rice and Shambo. What do you think? Yeah, well, I don't know. Three. I, Am I getting Jim too Rice, crazy here? Jim Rice, Shambo, and Tony. At least Tony's was in an episode. Yeah. I don't like, know. Uh, I, I Rice personally was like the other two better than, than Baby Shark, personally. Shambo was in a uh, recap show. In the credits, too. Mm-hmm. Post credits of a recap show. Yay! I don't know. Mike really doesn't like this. I, it's it's fine. Is, I, is you Asher making you listen it? to Baby Shark yeah. every day? Yeah, maybe Do you I hate have the an, Baby Shark. I have an axe yeah. to grind against that damn fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about because I, I just like the other two moments moments so much better than just like this. Yeah, Tony sings Baby Shark. It's fun moment. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's it's seven seconds of Tony singing Baby Shark. I could I could do with it. I could do without it. All right. I think it's memorable. Again, it was just this past season, so that's yeah. true as well. Recent, but bias. he's the winner of the season. The you know first or not not first time. Um, like our our second two time winner, and it like the you know, like it's an I- iconic character moment of his second winning game against all winners. I I feel like. It, I'll, I mean, listen. I'll, I'll be. I'll, I'm. I'm fine being outvoted here. If you two want to to place it, where, where do you want, want it, to. Jenny? Maybe we'll compromise. I think between Jim Rice and Shambo, okay. it's like this a very minor spot. move. This one spot, Mike. All right, we can quibble with one spot. Moment. Yeah, I'll settle for okay. one spot. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about our final spot on the list. I cheated a little bit because look, yes. this doesn't come from a Survivor contestant proper. But when we decided we were going to do an outweighed out play out list about some of Survivor's greatest musical moments, I could not in- not include this magnum opus into the show. You better be ready. It's coming for you. The fire is burning. And when this is through. Coming for you. When is it war? Coming for more. When is it war? When is it war? Coming for more. When is it war? Now that you're in it, what will you do? Keep your eyes open. They're coming. Well, sort of, I'll, I'll fade it out there. I actually, so I, I got it from uh, a YouTube a YouTuber by the name of Survivor Pennsylvania, who actually took the snatches of the song that we heard throughout the season 
and actually pieced it together into a cohesive piece. And it bops, it slaps, it taps, <laughs> it flaps, it punches, it jacks. It does all the verbs. Uh, so I, I highly recommend people check it out. But yeah, we, like we, we, we have to, we had to talk about this. There's a freaking GD theme song for Survivor Winners at War. Mm -hmm. And you love it. I love it. <laughs> It's ridiculous that there's a theme song where they're doing a challenge and someone's yelling winners at war to a song for the season called winners at war. Mm. I'm still surprised that there wasn't a, a full version discoverable in any other way, except for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, yes. taking to YouTube to splice it all together from you the know, episodes. We were robbed of the live finale of Survivor yes. 40. Do yeah. you think we would have had a, a live performance of the woman that sings the song of the winners at war? Would, would it have been a la Seiku Bunch, a la Chase Rice? Would we have gotten the live performance? I'll do you one better. Remember in the American Idol finale the first time when they brought in like all these people from all these years to sing together? Mike, how could I forget the I, American Idol finale from the first time? I think you composite it all together, right? You bring back Wanda. You bring back Chase Rice. You bring no, back you're, Mike, Bunch. you're talking about something silly. You want like a uh, we are the worlds apart. That's what I want. Yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I was talking about the series finale of American Idol the first time. Not a moment like this. I'm mm -hmm. talking about like, I want the dragons all there. I want the entire LaFleur tribe. I mm -hmm. want Gabriel Cade there. I mm -hmm. want Shambo Sonya. there for getting the lyrics. Like, I need the entire group there to sing Winners at War. Yeah. Get LaFleur yeah, we need there full, as a background yeah, dancer. Winners LaFleur. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, Chris Noble is going to have like a solo in the middle. It'd be great. <laughs> Popping bottles because <laughs> <laughs> it's champagne flutes. Somebody need... scream! <laughs> Chris Noble and Gabe Cade together, mm -hmm. the way it's meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Noble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Stop clapping. laughs> yeah. Be wild. Yeah. It would have been it would have been absolutely wild. We know canonically that's what would have happened had we had the live finale of Survivor Winners at War with them singing Winners at War, Ready for War, Winners at War. -or 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 -or. Just another reason how. <laughs> COVID, you screwed us over. <laughs> okay. We need Let's that to be a thing. <laughs> All right. Winners at War. Uh, Mike's hungry for more. <laughs> I am always hungry for more. I, I think this, I would argue putting this at the top of my life is fine, personally. Like, it, I don't think this is so iconic as these other five musical moments, but it's a freaking song for a season of Survivor. <laughs> I've never heard anybody else be as high on the Winners at War theme song. Yeah. I mean, I'm used let's... to people just pooping on it. But that's you can the, the fun is pooping on it. Poop is fun in this regard, you know? <laughs> you can it's it's fun to poop on it. It's fun to loud it with praise. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 an all-encompassing song. And or every win on it. <laughs> and every single time throughout throughout the weirdness of Winners at War, whenever that damn song came in, everyone was like, what the hell is going on? It was a rallying point for their survivor community. But it like, was a meme. It was definitely yeah. it, okay. it, like it did have some meme power um, just because it was so random and unprecedented. Um, yeah. So I do I do think that it probably deserves to be in my life is fine. I I I could not personally let it go further than that, but okay, that's fine. If Mike feels that strongly about it, yeah, I, I feel like that I mean, uh, again. This is this is the other side of the recency bias, right? Like, uh, if you were so high on Tony Baby Shark, I mean, people were singing "You Better Be Ready" ever since December 2019, uh, including Rob Cesarino himself. So I, I think that <laughs> it's it certainly has uh, stood the test of time. I believe it's it's been the most talked about thing maybe from the season for the past year and a half. Okay, well, then let's take a look at our list in toto, as Mike uh, put in the beginning of the podcast, and see if we want to make any adjustments right now. Forget you go home. Goodbye. We have at the very bottom of uh, the floor is the LaFleur chant with Scout and her siren song. 
right above it. <laughs> she did sound like a siren at one point, right? She's like, oh. <laughs> Any thoughts on changing it here? I, I think this is good. And I think I'm fine with these two being in the bottom tier. Because I think these two are the only ones to... Not the most interesting part of these songs, these scenes aren't the songs themselves. Yeah. Jenny, any thoughts? No, I'm good with that. I, I think that that, yeah, yeah, like no complaints. Okay. It, then it's, they're in the, they're in the right spot together. Like everything about it makes sense. Just above it. Ain't no Hershey bar. Uh, there are seven moments uh, here. Shapira, uh, that uh, have you ever seen the rain? Then. We have the beatbox of Gabriel. Then we have Jerry Manthe. We have Shambo, Eye of the Survivor, or Eye of the Tiger, by Survivor. Tony, Baby Shark. Jim Rice, Cochran, You Screwed Me Over. And Sean Sings, Brand New Day. So I personally would be fine with swapping Gabe with Jerry, just because I think, like, even the, the callbacks we've done over this podcast proves that Gabe's bad rapping, I think, has a little bit more entertainment value than Jerry singing yeah. Fiona Apple, despite how hard it may be. That's Jenny, a good you point. like that? That's a good point. Yeah, that is. Yes. Like, we've been making way more callbacks to that than, than Jerry. Yes. Okay. Well, list making is hard to do. It is. Yes. But otherwise, I think I feel, I feel good about yeah, it. Yeah, I feel, I feel okay about this. All right. Then in the next tier, my life is fine. We uh, start with uh, from bottom to the top, Chase Rice, Buzzback. Then we have Seiku Bunch, Survivor, Survivor. That's the second Survivor's all in <laughs> lowercase letters. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Thank Sonia you. sings uh, Bye Bye Blues in uh, Winners at War, the titular theme song. I like also having, it's actually, there's a nice some symmetry going on, right? We have both reunion performances next to each other, and we have the very first episode of, of the first season, and then the last season represented right next to each other. Yeah. Yes. Uh, do we know, is Sonia a Cajun grandma by any chance? Oh, maybe she was brought in. <laughs> mm -hmm. You better be ready. Bye, bye, blues. <laughs> All right. Hell of a mashup. Jenny, any thoughts on changing this tier? My life is fine. Um... No, I really love the, the pictures of Sonia and Seiku. Yeah, and we Chris. can't. Yes, they look like they're them. jamming. They like look they're like performing they're islands in the stream. <laughs> and the the winners at war flag looks like it's just blowing in in the distance behind them. So, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I can't I can't quibble with that too much. Okay, all right. Then finally, we have worth playing for top five baby. Okay, from five to one. Casey Kasem and voting out Roger. We have a T-Bird. The sun will come out tomorrow. Chris Noble's uh, Ponderosa rap. We have Wanda that basically the like the complete song collection of Wanda <laughs> and then the dragons. Yeah. Wanda the experience. Yes. Yeah, All right. I, I, I am good with this. I'm ready to lock this in. Yeah. Yes. All okay. right. We're great. All right. There we go. How about that? We end on That's a high note. List. Let's take a picture. There, there it go. is. Okay. Wow. There it is. That's that top the list. five. It really is squad goals. Like yes, yes. It's so okay. good. It's so good. All right. There it is. All right. If you want to take a look at the list. Uh, all right. Great job once again, Jenny. This was so fun to do the list with you. I had a great time. I was so excited for this, and it delivered completely. Um, I'm always so happy to talk to either of you and to be able to talk about something so fun like this has really made my Friday late afternoon, early evening. <laughs> so thank okay. you. I'm glad we made that very specific portion of time on this very specific hey, day. It's very, yeah, it's very important. Tough to time slot to fill. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. you may notice from the video that my lighting has changed significantly from the time yes, that we yes, started. Your, yes, your microphone <laughs> well, light is. Uh, I do believe yeah. the, sun, the sun will come out, though, at some point. Tomorrow. I hope so. Tomorrow, yes. likely. Yes. Jenny, what do you have going on uh, outside of uh, ranking the arbitrary and reductive with us? Um, Not a whole lot. Just uh, popping on some streams here and there. I do have my own Twitch channel that is very I saw casual. that on Instagram the other day. 
It's Ooh. very casual. I was trying to stream Among Us uh, last weekend. We were doing the proximity chat and uh, the the technology, they weren't talking well to each other. Um, but I do believe I will be streaming this Sunday with Puya and the gang, the whole squad. Um, That's my favorite band, by the way. Goals. Yeah, <laughs> Puya and the gang. Um, and, you know, Phil and I occasionally just feel like, you know, doing dumb stuff. So you might see us popping up on your uh, your Twitch feed at some point. So it feel for, like, honestly, I'm taking it very, very casual because casual. I just don't. Yeah, it's a very casual Twitch stream, but uh, twitch.tv slash Jenny Autumn, if you care to check that out. Okay. All right. And then Mike Bloom, what do you have coming up? Yeah, I can put out, here's my EP, I suppose. Uh, Everyday <laughs> Podcast. That's what EP stands <laughs> yeah. for. Yes. So we have the aforementioned uh, Paramount Mountain Brain Steel that's going to be coming up. Of course, Rob, you and I got together to talk about Tough as Nails, a very yeah. mysterious episode of Tough as Nails that you and I, I think, tried to suss out this past week. On Down the Hatch, Josh Riggler and I talked about The Constant, which some argue is one of the best episodes of Lost of All Time. It's so great to go back through that. Uh, the Bloom Files, my wife and I are talking through an entire arc in The X-Files Season 2 that I really enjoyed as well. And then uh, coming up, Shannon Gus and I are going to talk some Survivor South Africa this weekend. And I'm very excited. This was announced last night, Rob, when you got together to uh, draft and talk about the cast of Big Brother Canada 9. I'm going to be doing a Big Brother Canada think tank with mm -hmm. Taryn Armstrong and uh, breaking news, blah, 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 uh, some new panelists announced. Jenny Autumn herself will be there. Whoa! As Woo! Well, as well as... My partner in crime on the BNB. We won't be bringing the BNB back to Big Brother, but we're going to have it live in some form here on the podcast. Liana Boris is going to be joining wow, Taryn and I. An all star as well. panel. Yeah. So we're, we're going to, I think uh, Taryn's going to come up with a Google form in the next day or so. We'll tweet it out. But uh, if you all have ideas for weird, wacky twists, because you know Big Brother Canada loves to do they that type them. of stuff. Feel free to, to write it to write into us. We'll go through your suggestions. We'll make up our own. We'll have a generally really fun, zany time before we get into Big Brother Canada proper. So be sure to, to check all that. And I'm sure much more coming in the next week. OK, uh, let's talk about what's coming up on Rob has a podcast. Of course, I mentioned Wednesday night. HHH went through everything from the 33rd best season, according to the listeners of Rob has a podcast. Survivor HHH. Uh, no uh, musical entries from HHH uh, here tonight, but still uh, the 33rd best season. Uh, check out what's going on. There and then we did our all star, our, I'm sorry, not all star, our Big Brother Canada Nine uh, draft last night. Uh, myself and Taryn and Amon and Melissa got together to uh, draft the Big Brother Canada Nine cast. We had a replacement in the cast uh, live on the show. It was wild. Oh, so uh, you can wild. check out our draft coverage uh, as we get ready for the new season of Big Brother Canada Nine. Very excited. I will be hosting our Monday night recaps live on. Big Brother Canada. I didn't do any Big Brother Canada 8 podcasting uh, last season except for a guest spot after the first episode. So I will be with you along the way for Big Brother Canada 9 uh, with no Survivor going on here this spring. Tough as nails. Mike mentioned uh, he and I got together. Jessica Lee will be back with us next week as we uh, recap uh, Tough as Nails Season 2 over on Robin's Podcast. And later on, on Friday night, we will drop the conclusion to our series on the RJP Rewind covering Pirate Master, Jordan Kalish, Seeds Matey joins uh, myself <laughs> and Aaron Robertson to talk about the home stretch of Pirate Master. There you wow. go. Uh, and all this week, uh, we are reminding people about the work that is being done by the North Texas Food Bank, helping out our listeners in the state of Texas. Uh, if you are interested in uh, learning more and if you have the means, uh, you can uh, make a donation to the North Texas Food Bank like we did. We donated 3,000 meals to the uh, North Texas Food Bank, ntfb.org. And there's also uh, many other great organizations in the state of Texas helping out people that were affected by the uh, winter storms there in the last week. Thank you so much uh, for checking us out here today. All right. Uh, anything else? No, I mean, I think that not to uh, to put the cart before the horse, but I think that we might be doing another triple low coming up sometime in the next few weeks as well as we're gearing up for maybe some Survivor coming back, but maybe not for, for a little while. So uh, look forward to some more listing going on, even if we're moving on from the musical moments themselves. All right. Uh, Jenny, anything else? 
No, this is a great time. I, I honestly great great way to kick off my weekend. I'm I'm smiling. I'm smiling. Yeah, I'm happy. Okay. Right, you got your All buzz right. back. Yeah, you got your I got buzz, my buzz back. back. <laughs> Somebody scream. Take care, everybody. Good one. Bye. <laughs>